all right. Hey, thank you, Triple Scoop Music, uh, once again for the great intro music. Uh, welcome, everybody, to The Real Picture. I am your host, Greg Gibson. Uh, today's show hits really close to home for me. We're going to be talking to Matt Mendelson about his project to photograph all 500 seniors at his daughter's high school uh, in Arlington, Virginia. In full disclosure here, I have to tell you guys that Matt is one of my very best friends, so I'm a little bit biased about what he's doing. Matt is like my family, and I love him dearly. I love his big heart, I love his generosity, and I love his willingness and determination to go out and do some good in the world. So I know probably some of you guys are thinking, what's going to happen to this show when I run out of friends? But don't worry, I have a lot of friends, and I have uh, a bunch of them that do some really You don't have that things. many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn your mic off, careful. So... Uh, <laughs> This isn't the first time that Matt started a big project to help a group of people. He's done full day portrait shoots to raise money for a friend's husband who was killed in Iraq. He drove a cargo truck uh, loaded with clothes and toys and cleaning supplies up to New York in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy to help the people up there get back on their feet. So giving back isn't something that's particularly new to him. Um, so I'm really looking forward to talking to Matt about the new project. Uh, it's something that's gotten really excited. It's called Not Forgotten the Yorktown seniors of 2020. And I know some of you uh, are out there rolling your eyes a little bit and you're thinking that this is just another one of those porch portrait projects and maybe Matt should just you know stay at home like everybody else. But I just wanna set the record straight right now. This is not just another rip off of the porch, uh, porch portraits project. This one is a little bit different. This is not sort of the happy smiley project where everybody stands and smiles for the camera. Uh, he's not doing it as a portrait photographer. Matt's doing it as a photojournalist. So he's not out there trying to capture, as he says, the beautiful girl in the tulips. This is really a documentary pro project that's being approached by an established photojournalist to try and tell the story of each and every senior at Arlington, Virginia's Yorktown High School and to share the sense of loss that all these kids feel about missing out on some of the basic rites of passage like not being able to hold graduation, not being able to have a senior prom, and not even be able... Uh, being able to uh, defend their state championship in soccer. So uh, along the way, uh, this project has picked up a ton of media attention, including the Washington Post, local television, the CBS Evening News, and the Today Show. And Matt has even received recognition on the project from U.S. Senator Tim Kaine. So I'm really looking forward to talking to Matt uh, about this in detail and about his 35-year career as photographer uh, the genesis for this project, as well as examining some of the in images. But first, as usual, I do have a little bit of housekeeping to take care of, so bear with me here. I have some great news. We finally were able to obtain a custom URL for the channel, so as of now, we're much easier to find. You can find, uh, you can now access the channel at youtube.com slash forward slash the real picture TV. In fact, let me just put up, uh, where are my media links here? I think this is it. Yeah, so there's all of our social media links. So um, we now have the custom URL for YouTube. We also have a Facebook page for the channel uh, as well. Uh, and I've been posting some announcements and some pictures on Facebook and other stuff there. So please come and join us on that page so that you can sort of stay up to date with what we're doing. Um, we also have an Instagram account where I've been posting some announcements about upcoming shows. So take a look at that as well. And last time... Um, we were on, I mentioned that I had become a brand ambassador for Stella Pro Lights. So Stella Pro Lights are continuous LED lights that are made for still photography, video, cinema, whatever your lighting needs might be. In fact, Stella Lights are lighting me up right now. Uh, in fact, if you caught the last show, you're going to notice that I changed the background color from red to a little bit warmer, more of a warmer tone. Someone told me that red is an angry color and I don't want to be angry, so I'm trying to warm up a little bit. But anyway, uh, the Stella CL... CLX-10 model is a 10,000 lumen light that is bright enough to use outside in broad daylight uh, to fill in those harsh shadows. Yell, it's small enough and it runs cool enough that you can actually hold it in your hands. Anyone who's familiar with my work knows that I really do love the look of continuous light. And as a Sony shooter, I really do feel that continuous light is the best solution for mirrorless cameras in a lot of situations. Now, I know it's not a good time to be pitching gear to photographers, but I do have a 20% discount code that I can share with you guys to hopefully take away some of that sting. Um, so let me just put the link up here. Uh, so that's the link. Uh, I don't think that the promo code is going to go away anytime soon. So hopefully that is still going to be out there 
um, for when this situation stabilizes and you're ready to get some new gear. And lastly, and as always, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. If it's not your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, then shame on you. Hit that subscribe button right now. We're on a short-term mission for, uh, for 1,000 subscribers. We do want 10,000 eventually, but right now we're going to settle for 1,000. So we have a little over 400 right now. Uh, so we do have a ways to go to reach that short-term goal uh, of 1,000. Having 1,000 subscribers is going to unlock some additional features for us here on the channel that we can share with you guys as well. Uh, and, and it's going to help our content rank higher in the YouTube search engines, which just helps everyone by making our content easier to find. And when you do subscribe and engage with us, it just makes what we're doing feel so much more worthwhile. So hit that subscribe button. Give us some likes on the shows. Engage with us in the live chat um, while the show's live. And then leave us some comments when you're done uh, to let us know how we're doing. I have really appreciated all the support and words of encouragement from you guys. It really does mean a lot. So that is all the housekeeping I have to do to today. So let me go back and bring on my good friend, Matt Mendelson. So, hey, welcome, Matt. Hey, buddy. How are you? So Matt, Matt has gotten so much media. <laughs> I've seen you. For, I've seen you my whole life. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Now I have to watch you on television. It's fun. <laughs> well, Matt has gotten so much media attention from this project. I thought we were going to have to broadcast today's show in 4K just so we could get his head on the screen. But it does oh, make me stop, really... Stop, stop. Ah, come on. It makes me really happy to see you all pumped up. And if anybody deserves it, uh, you know, it's certainly you. Thank you. I mean, I'm excited that I can be a conduit for the, the praise to go to the, the seniors of Yorktown who had sort of been you know, languishing with no, no congratulations. So it's all good for everybody. Thanks. And if I can help stretch your 15 minutes of fame out to maybe 20 or 25, then so be it. And I guess I do owe you some, uh, some milkshakes too. No, no, no more milkshakes, no more milkshakes, but thank you. So, uh, I've known Matt since about 1985 or so when I was working for UPI down in North Carolina, Matt was a picture editor, uh, for UPI on the desk up in Washington. And I used to shoot a lot of late night basketball games and it always seemed like Matt was working the late, the late shift or the night shift uh, at UPI. So I got to talk to him on the phone a lot when I would call up uh, to schedule pictures to send out. And with his obvious talent and his passion for pictures, Matt quickly moved off the picture desk and he ended up uh, working for UPI out in Los Angeles where he covered everything from the Rodney King trial to the first Gulf War. Um, and if you ever get to spend any time around Matt, you have to get him to tell you one of his stories about Jack Nicholson eating sandwiches in his darkroom space during halftime of the Lakers games, <laughs> because they're pretty funny. <laughs> it happened. It happened every night. Every night I saw him. <laughs> so sometime in the late, late to, or in the mid nineties, Matt left UPI to work uh, for USA Today and, and Matt continued to cover major news stories around Washington and elsewhere. But he also carved out a bit of a niche for himself as a celebrity portrait artist. Uh, where he photographed stars like Jennifer Aniston, Leonard Nimoy, Bill Murray, Chris Rock, Stephen Hawking, Eli Wiesel, just to name a few of them. And for the past 20 plus years, he's been working for himself from his studio in Old Town Alexandria, sort of documenting the lives and the weddings of residents in the Washington, D.C. Um, metropolitan area and beyond. Matt is also uh, part of a very talented family. His oldest brother, Daniel, is a best-selling author uh, of a book called uh, The Lost, which chronicles his family's effort over five years to learn the fates of relatives who perished in the Holocaust. And Matt also uh, did some fantastic photography work uh, as part of that project. His other brother, Eric, is also a, a director and a screenwriter who has twice been awarded the Best Director Honors at the Sundance Film Festival. And his sister, Jennifer, is also a well-known journalist and a ghostwriter whose work has appeared in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Politico, many other uh, prestigious uh, publications, but she may perhaps be best known for starting something called resistance genealogy. And this is sort of a thing that she started where she just has perfected the art of pointing out the hypo hypocrisy um, in several high ranking officials who spoke out against immigration. And it turns out that in fact, a lot of the people who spoke out against immigration were in fact uh, US citizens, thanks to their own immigrant ancestors, uh, many of which came to this country penniless and poor. So that is something right. that um, Jennifer has just made an art form out of. 
So Matt has a lot to live up to. Uh, Daniel and Eric both have their own Wikipedia pages. So Matt, you have some catching up to do. You forgot one brother too. He's a physicist. So what's his name? Andrew. He's the smartest Andrew. of the bunch. Oh, Andrew. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I, yes. He, he has a PhD from Stanford in physics. He's well, pretty yeah. smart. He fathered in, followed yeah. in your dad's footsteps because your dad was a, uh, yeah. a mathemati mathematician yeah. and a, wasn't he uh, like a rocket scientist or something? Um, yeah, he was smart. So he was a research okay. scientist at Ground Aerospace. So yeah, he was a very smart guy. But you know, this project comes from my mother's side and we can talk about it in a second. Yeah. You know, they're, it's funny because everybody, everyone instinctively when you know instinctively when somebody talks about my family and they say um you have a very smart family we always go to my father's side for some reason I, I don't know why but just because he's a research scientist but you know this project comes from my mother's side because my mother did one thing my mother was not a research scientist but my mother always always took hot chocolate to the garbage men in a snowstorm and i learned a lot from my mother doing that and you know this project really comes from from my mother's hot chocolate escapades than it, it does from my father's brilliance. So anyway, <laughs> proceed, proceed. Well, I was just <laughs> going to say that Matt is um, married to the lovely Maya Vestardis, who, um, and if you know Matt very well, he's also the proud and doting father to Alexandra, who inspired him to uh, start this Not Forgotten project to begin with. And in fact, if you've ever been around Matt, you know, um, he's, I'm sure he's bored you to tears by showing you some pictures of Alexandra. <laughs> but we love him. And I, in fact, I have a little video that I'm going to embarrass Matt with for just a little bit here that I think is going to tell you more about him than anything I can say. Um, a, a while back, he was helping me test out some microphones one day, and I was just trying to teach myself how to do oh some video. My God. We were goofing around and at first, and then Matt became sort of very introspective. And so the first minute of this is a little bit silly, but the last part I think is really special. So I'm going to play this, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy this. Blah, is it working? I could use a new Sony A9 II. That's the number two. Oh, hang on. I got to restart this. All right. Now we got it. You're not posting this anywhere. I can't think of anything to say. Uh, distinctly, I remember it was in the bleak December and each and every dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Is it working? Juan that after with a short or so to the Docht of March and pass it to the Rota. No, I won't do it in Old English. Oh, shit. That's Maya. Hang on one second. Hang on. Hey Siri, call my Vestardis. Hey Siri, call my Vestardis. Sorry, I didn't quite catch oh, that. Because you're an idiot, Siri. Is it working? So I think the problem we have here is a failure to communicate. Blah, 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 blah. Is it working? I could use a new Sony A9 II. That's the number two. You better, really, you better delete all of this <laughs> fucking shit. I got into photography because my uncle Alan, who was a professor at the University of Chicago, was an, an avid amateur. And he once sent me a photograph that he took at the Museum of Natural History in Chicago. And it showed a school class trip at the Museum of Natural History, a group of kids, and they were all gathered around the dinosaur. It wasn't a skeleton of a dinosaur, it was like a recreated dinosaur. And the way he framed it was all you could see was the big foot and all these little kids just looking up at the foot. And it was like such a revelation to me to see that picture because I was like, oh, you don't have to show the whole dinosaur. Oh, well, look at the kids expressions and all this big foot in the foreground. And I was just mesmerized. And I told him I loved the picture and he sent me an Olympus OM-1 and he would critique, I would send my prince to chicago and he would send a note saying good composition and that's how it all started 1975. tell me like your top three favorite photographs that you've ever taken number one was a girl in petra jordan smiling with the most beautiful white teeth um, we were on a mountain road in jordan and we stumbled upon this little girl um, she was, uh, she just had the most beautiful face I've ever seen. She looked like she had emerged from like a, a, a 
playground. She was covered in dirt and her teeth were just beautiful white and her eyes, it was just the most beautiful backlight. It was amazing, I'll never forget that. Funny thing, the bride and groom years later looked at my website and said, oh, I think we shot that same girl. I said, ha 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 ha, that can't be the same girl. And they said, no, the exact same Maya? girl. We were in Petra that year and we were on a mountain pass and that's the girl and it was the same girl. Picture of Alexandra jumping by the Eiffel Tower, Hasselblad. I miss shooting with my Hasselblad. Um, it was this big. Why do you like that picture so much? I just think it's the most beautiful. I just miss the square. There was something about the Hasselblad square. I'm not talking about the square. I'm talking about the picture of your daughter. Hey, Greg? No, because it was on. I just loved shooting in a square, and it's a square format picture. And she's jumping and she's got these little curls and she's got these little boots on and it's just like the most perfect photograph i've ever made in my life hey so what do you think of that matt <laughs> i didn't have any audio of that so it's probably for the <laughs> best i mean it's the best <laughs> I, oh, I could tell what I was saying, though. I could read my lips. No, it's um, it's still the best picture I've ever taken in my life. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, everything comes second after that picture. And I'm sure everybody has a picture like that in their life. So it's it's a great I, I, I look at that picture and it's just total joy. So um, I, I appreciate that. Exactly. It certainly says more about you than and how you feel about your family and their, your photography more than anything. I could say that's for sure. All right, let's. Um, we went to Paris two years. We went to Paris two years ago, and we recreated that picture, by the way. And of course, Alexander's now almost seventeen, but she jumped in the air for me, and it was great. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful image. So, um, you've been a photographer for thirty-five years, and I don't. We're not kind of kind of go back and rehash a lot of that. I think because I think most people watching are sort of familiar with that. But I did. I do think that it would be kind of fun to do like one story. So, I'm going to put up. This picture is a picture of Leonard Nimoy. It's actually one of my favorite Matt pictures. And so can you just kind of tell everybody what the backstory is on this Leonard Nimoy picture, Matt? There's, there's a great backstory because this was when USA Today was still in Roslyn in Arlington, Virginia. And we had a studio up on the, on the, uh, the top floor of the building. I knew I was going to shoot Leonard Nimoy. So I ran up to the street. There was a comic book store. And I said, quick, I need a doll of Spock doll. Do you have a Spock doll? And they had a Spock doll and I got it. And I got back to the studio. I immediately broke it in half. And the best part about this picture is it was done in an analog world. This was pre Photoshop. And you can see the Scotch tape that I used to bend the little doll's hand <laughs> into that position. I left the Scotch tape in there. So anyway, Leonard Nimoy had, he had written a book called um, I Am Not Spock during the 1970s, sort of like get lost, go away. And then back in the 1990s, uh, with all the new movies that had come out, and I guess to cash in a little bit, he wrote a new book called I Am Spock. And so I thought, okay, he's gonna have a little fun. He's not so grumpy anymore. And we were up in the studio and I had my little doll with the scotch taped hand. And he walks in and this was on a Hasselblad, a two and a quarter Hasselblad camera. and. I, I showed him the doll and I said, I'd like to just do this as kind of like your alter ego, like a little parrot on your shoulder. And he looked at it and he said, no. I mean, he didn't even think twice. He just said no. And so you do what I call the walk of shame, which is a photographer kind of turns your back. You walk back to the camera and you go, oh crap, I have no other ideas. And um, as I got back to my camera and you start sweating profusely, he said, let me see the doll. And I thought, okay, you know, like a fisherman, you figure you got a little bit of a, 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 a hook. And he said, I said, yeah, just sort of like a parrot on your shoulder. And, uh, and, and, and we took the picture. And he was not a nice, was not a nice guy. guy. And I still love the picture. Love the picture. It, was it, sort of, it was perfect. And obviously when he passed away, this picture, just because of being in various archives, um, was all over the place. Um, but I just, every time I see it, I immediately look at the scotch tape on the hand and I think, you know, it was sort of, it was very low rent, um, but I, <laughs> I do love the picture. 
Yeah, that's one of my favorites of yours for sure. Well, <laughs> Matt, Matt is also really well known for doing a, uh, portrait sessions around the area called what he calls the Dog Day Marathon Portraits. And basically what he does is he goes out to a, a dog kennel or a, what, the pet resort. Is that what it is? Yeah, I, I, it started with the old pet resort, but it's it's moved on to various pet resorts. So he'll go out to a pet resort. He sets up in the parking lot, uh, brings this backdrop and uh, some scrims and reflectors and lighting stuff. And basically he does like a marathon day where he shoots people with their dogs all day long. And so he does them in like 10 to 15 minute sessions. So he does them really quickly and he does them for like eight hours a day. And so that was sort of the genesis for this project. And this Not Forgotten project has some elements from the dog day thing. So Matt, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your about how you do the dog day portraits and kind of what inspired you for that? Um, the, dog, the, the dog portraits were sort of a get in, get out, no gets hurt kind of uh, photography. I, you know, I've always called it, like I call this project, it's sort of speed dating, fine art photography. I always wanted to, um, my friend who owned a particular pet resort, the old pet resort, asked me 15 years ago if I could do pictures for their the wall of their new building with their clients. And so we just set up a backdrop and I wanted to do it, you know, somewhat, I mean, this is ridiculous, but I mean, you know, when Richard Avedon did the American West, he threw up a white backdrop on whatever building he was shooting. And I, I, I just wanted it to be easy and yet look cool. So I would, you know, I would scour the area for old crates and old boxes and old trucks. And I would, you know, I would be like a little caravan. I would show up, I would unload my cases and, and boxes, my backdrop, the same backdrop that I'm using, by the way, for this project. And I would shoot these people. We would do all these sessions in 10, you know, five, 10 minutes. Um, the object is to make a beautiful picture that goes to the heart of a person's relationship with their dog, but do it, you know, kind of, like I said, kind of speed dating approach. Um, and, you know, it has grown since then. And people now sort of clamor for me to come to their area and do the pictures. And, and I have so much fun. I mean, it, it beats, you know, working, I guess. I mean, who could, you know, I'm spending a day with, with dogs and uh, it, I have a blast. So I know like you're a big um, fan of Richard Avedon and I know like a few years ago, Avedon did this thing where he traveled a, around America and he made portraits of people um, basically with a, with a, like a white sheet or a very simple plain backdrop and he shot it all on four by five um, with just available light, um, indirect, uh, open shade kind of light. And so would you say that Maybe that had a little bit of influence on doing the dog day portraits. I am an open shade guy. I'm not a lighting guy. I don't, I've never been a lighting guy. I mean, when I'm shooting Leonard Nemo, um, perhaps I was a lighting guy, but I was always a simple lighting guy. If I used a light, it was one big soft box and that was it. I'm not a, I'm not a six person, a six light kind of guy. So when I do the dog portraits and when I do these pictures that we're talking about today, the not forgotten pictures, you know, you want speed to be the guiding influence, you know? So I go and I always look for open shade, just simple light. I don't want complicated light. I don't want harsh shadows, especially if I'm shooting somebody, if we're talking about the dog portraits with a big black dog where, you know, sunlight is gonna be a disaster. So I, I just look for open shade. It's it's pleasing and expedience in the same, you know, the, the same conversation. I want it to go quickly and easily, and I wanna make a beautiful picture, you know? And so, yes, the light is, is Avedon, just open shit. I call it dugout light, but going back to the days of shooting baseball, when you, you're at a baseball game and it's really hard light out in center field. But if you want a beautiful portrait, you go on the dugout steps where it's open shade and there's, it's just soft, soft, soft. So the, the dog portraits are the same thing. Okay, so let's, let's jump over and uh, talk about some of, the, some of the dog pictures. Yeah. I mean, this is this is it in a nutshell right here, which is I want to make sort of a classic, you know, there's my backdrop, the same backdrop that we're using for the seniors these past two weeks. It's a little cleaner. It's a little cleaner, I think. Um, but this is it. I mean, this picture was taken in, in, you know, less than three minutes. And, you know, it's just about posing people and knowing how to create this aesthetic. When I tell people about the dog, I tell them the aesthetic 
is this circus tent nebraska 1925 i don't know why that pops into my mind but that's the aesthetic uh, uh the influence i i tell them that you should just wear a pair of boots a pair of jeans you no know, logos it just should have this kind of timeless feel to it and this this picture probably you know sort of, sort of the backdrop i like the i've always liked to show the edge of my backdrop same thing with the senior pictures we're going to talk about today it's just my style i like i like the photo off the backdrop I like the rough edge of the backdrop, the turn edge. I just, you know, it's supposed to be messy and classic at the same time. And this is, this is a good one. You know, again, five minutes. Um, I'm good at reading people. I'm good at reading dogs, um, just sort of like the seniors. I come up to the seniors. We'll talk about the seniors. I, I gauge, you know, I kind of quickly assess with the dog portraits, I quickly assess, um, you know, this is a young high school girl and the light was gorgeous. And, you know, as we both know, the, the one of the great mantras of photography is get it and then get it better. Um, so you start out with a plain picture and then you say, well, what about this? What if you go under? What if you do this? And you wait for the dog and we're yelling and, you know, trying to get the dog's attention and people are Greece, and that out of that chaos comes this little brief second of serenity. Well, I love. This. I mean, I just love the. I love the 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 one hound on the you know right, just snoozing away there. I just, <laughs> I'm, I, I you know, it's it's trying to make something beautiful in three minutes or less. I don't know how you know. I just I'm just like used to it now I, I know how to sort of make it look right um it's you know a lot like of times people like want to right, come it's almost like three minutes is the right time because dogs like young children don't have a a long attention span i guess unless you're holding treats for them then they'll <laughs> then they'll hold for you forever well the funny thing is there are so many similarities between the dog stuff and the portrait sessions one is that the backdrop on a windy day is flying all over the parking lot these are all done in a parking lot there's a car to the right and a car to the left. And, you know, I, I one of the things I'm good at in life is, is tunnel vision. You know, sometimes I'll stop at a red light and as it is red, I'll look over to the left and I'll see a dumpster and an alleyway at a restaurant. And I think to myself, there's one beautiful bit of soft light in there. I can make a nice portrait between the dumpster and the alleyway. I'm, I'm this and, and uh, oh, this is what I'm trying to do. Let's see what the... Uh, yeah, I mean, they're just I'm not, like, it's not reinventing the wheel. All right, here's a beautiful picture. I mean, this is just exactly what I'm trying to do. This is, this is it. I mean, I just, I love this picture to death. If she were wearing an Adidas shirt or a sweatshirt, or she was wearing sneakers with a Nike logo, the whole thing would be ruined. You know, it just needs to have that kind of like circus tent, Nebraska 1925 feel to it. And I love this picture so much. I, I this would be the cover if I did a, a a book of the dogs. This would be it. I mean, it's all about people have me. Can I? Can you just show photograph my dog? And I always say, not really, because there's no story there. You can go to the mall and go to quick shots at the mall and and get a picture of your dog. For me, it's without the human and the dog. There's no picture, and this is it. Yeah, it's just like like any type of portrait. You want to make that like any kind of image that has a little bit of connection between the subjects is always more, much more compelling. You find that just a little Absolutely. bit of emotion, even between a pet and its owner. And again, you know, this is parking lot in under four minutes, same thing under four minutes. We're just, you know, I, I'm a good read. One of the silly things is that if you have a background, like Greg and I have a background in news photography and in wire, specifically wire service photography, you're in a motorcade, the motorcade stops, you get off and you're in a gymnasium that you've never been in in your life. And you have one second to figure out the light, where the person is gonna be, where the picture is gonna be, you just have to assess quickly. And you know, those skills 30 years later help me when I do these things, you know, speed dating versus portrait photography. I know what my dogs are, what the people are, how I can do it. If the person is shy, if the person is outgoing, I can just 
sum that up very quickly and figure out how to make a, a picture. I mean, this picture wouldn't work with perhaps a older shy individual. You know, you have to be, um, you have to be outgoing. I shot a picture today on the senior portrait of a kid named Bennett, and Bennett said, "I love fly fish." And I said, "Bennett, I have a pair of hip waders?" And he said, "I do." And we made a nice picture. So same thing here. You have to just be able to be a good gauge of people, what they can do and what they can't do. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they're simple pictures, but I, I love them. They always make me happy every time I see this picture, whatever, whatever you're going to show me next, uh, you know, show me something and I'll tell you, let's see. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to roll through these Ugh. fairly, fairly fast, but if yeah. anything you want to talk about, let me, let me know. We'll stop. Yeah. I love that picture. You know, just every, keep going. They're all just. Wow. Oh, I love huge. this picture. What kind of dog is that? That dog is huge. I know. You know, they, um, um, oh my God, <laughs> you know what it is. It's a Newfoundland. Um, you know, here's an example. Do I, I love this picture every time I see this picture. And yet every time I see this picture, I also think if only those sunglasses were on the head, it would be a better picture. You know, the modern, the trappings of modernity kind of intrude and they, I like it with the boots. I like it with the jeans. I like it. I just want it to be, you know, sometimes I'll do the dog pictures and a kid will show up with an Adidas shirt and it kind of just kind of, it's a mood killer. So every time I see this picture, I love it. And then I, ah, oh, I just got rid of those, those cycling glasses or the, you know, but it's a beautiful picture. It's all about connection. Every picture is a connection. Every part of every, the reason I can do these pictures is about connection. And you can't be a photographer without connection. I love that. Again, it feels like an old circus picture from the from the 1930s or something. I love this because everybody says that people look like their dogs. And, you know, I this picture just makes me laugh every time I see it. I love this picture. I mean, this was a dog that was rescued from Iran. And, um, wow. you know, the dog is paralyzed and she has kept it, kept you know, cared for the dog. And I, I mean, it's just, I love, I love her expression, you know, that little blowing hair and the earnestness of the eye. It's just beautiful. It's the tonality. The prince is just so nice too. Yeah. I, I, I like that one. This is one of the first ones I did. I think this was, you know, this shows, this was a, a family that was going into a pet resort that was not scheduled to have a portrait taken. So, not dressed, you know, and, and in a perfect world, maybe the guy's shirt with the logo ruins it. But I, don't, I mean, that's just kind of nitpicking. It's just, you want these pictures to have that kind of Ken Burns Silvori look. And you know, I, that's sort of like that just looking the daguerreotype look. And I love that. I love the baby. You know, look at that. It's awesome. Just nice. Beautiful light. How do you blow. like Roy's? I mean, how it's do you all get the, open like, shade like, with backlight. Open shade. How are you getting that backlight? Because I, you know, the sun's behind, and I always want the sun behind. I, uh, you know, if it comes over the backdrop and gives some backlight, that's added bonus. But for the most part, I'm in an open parking lot. You know, any photographer knows that you go into an open parking lot and you're dead because it's, you know, these pictures. I'm not saying let's meet at sunrise and let's meet at sunset picture could be taken at one o'clock in the afternoon, you know, which means the sun is directly overhead. So you have to sort of find your shade, your open shade. And that's what we do. I mean, it, again, it's not like rocket science, but it's just trying to make it easy. And then, uh, you know, a little hint of, of sunlight, maybe later in the day, it's probably at four o'clock in the afternoon. Now that I probably look at the light. Here's a good question that maybe you should address now is, um, Chris Mosley's asking if you're using any flash on these or any reflectors. I have not used a flash or reflector on any of dog pictures, any of the not forgotten pictures. Uh, you know, my guiding influence is a, a character in a Robert De Niro in a futuristic dystopian movie called Brazil, in which Robert De Niro plays a quote unquote, a plumber who gets in and out of these apartment buildings. And he says, you get in, you get out, nobody gets hurt. And that's what I like to do with, with these. Very easy. 
So never, never a flash. It's just open shade. I will use a, a scrim sometimes. You know, sometimes I'll have an assistant with a big, you know, just a, a big translucent um, um, a scrim just blocking harsh sunlight. Um, sometimes they'll just, I'll just give them one of my big uh, reflectors, not to reflect into the subject, but just, just to stand over my camera and literally, you know, block the harsh sun from coming into my, you know, to basically be a, a, a human lens shade, um, a lens. I love this picture. I love everything going on. You know, the dog looking at her, the kid looking at me, the father being, you know, stoic, mom looking on. It's just compositionally, it just is like, you know, it just clicks. You have to say, make it click. I was going to say, kind of going back to yeah, the lighting, ahead. that um, obviously if you're out in the sun doing these all day, you're only going to have open shade and when you start in the morning, depending on which way you're aiming and or where you set your background up. And then in the in later in the afternoon, when you start to actually get some shadows, but in the middle of the day, you've got to use some kind of a, a translucent scrim or something over the top in order to, to create that shade. Except... Right? Except if you're constantly moving your backdrop in the parking lot. <laughs> it's like a lazy Susan, basically. You know, where the sun goes, I'm kind of going the other direction. Um, you know, some days go better. Some days are tough. Some days we have clouds. It's beautiful. Um, you know, and some days we're just, we're holding something. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, you know, you just, it is what it is. I, this is one of my favorite pictures. I just... Favorite picture from the dog thing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> as you can see, it's just the craziest windy days. Doing the senior portraits that we're going to talk about in a few minutes, we've had an exceptionally windy couple of two weeks here. So the, the project on the senior started two weeks ago. It has been the windiest two weeks I can remember in Arlington. And that goes for the dogs too. Uh, sometimes the wind is blowing. And in this case, I was like, oh my God, the hair was just blowing. And, and you know what was great? What was great is these clients were great because the dog pictures are my portrait. People don't get to come in and say, can I see all the others? You know, I mean, we'll, I'll show them two or three alternate takes. But in this case, this couple was so great. They said, that's it. You know, sometimes people want the smiley, happy, non wind in their hair picture. But in this case, I mean, look at that dog, the stoicness of this little little dog with the wind howling. It, I love it. This is a case of where the people and the animal really match so well, like people really. Right. Do, exactly. Like, I mean, dogs. it happens. It happens. It happens so much more than you think. And I mean, the two of them together. Oh my God, look at that. Wow. I love that, you know, a yeah. giant schnauzer, a giant schnauzer. And, you know, sometimes I've done like a, um, Irish Wolfhound, you know, the, by far the tallest dog. And, you know, so in those cases, what are you doing? You're trying to emphasize size. So again, you see a backdrop, the same backdrop. Um, this backdrop, by the way, comes from an old friend of ours, a videographer named Jenny Lehman, who loaned it to me uh, decades ago. And I said, I love this background. When it goes black and white, it just, it's a bright blue background. In color, it doesn't look so great for me, but when it goes black and white, it just has these beautiful swirls to it. It was hand painted many decades ago. And um, Jenny, uh, Jenny moved and, and she sold me the backdrop and I was so excited. And the backdrop is in good company. I'm taking care of it. I'm not taking care of it. It's getting pretty trash. I love that. I love the wind. Look at that. It's just a little bit of wind. One little bit. I love this picture. Again, parking lot, building. That, you know, those, if you go back one, I don't know, can you go back one? One yeah. more? I mean, there's our, uh, no, that one, that one, that one with the suitcase. Okay. Yep. You know, Facebook, Facebook marketplace is great. I go search on vintage suitcase, vintage crate. And I buy these things for $10 or something. I, I once drove an hour to buy a suitcase um, just because it had a great look to it. And they get trashed in that trunk. That trunk was in my mother's, my mother-in-law's garage. Um, she gave it to us um, from Savannah, Georgia, and it sat in our garage for about 16 years, 
never touched. And when I started doing the dog portraits, I looked at the trunk and I said, aha, I have an idea. We can finally use that trunk that's been in our garage. So, I mean, look, this is one split second, four dogs with this open eyes picture ever, ever happen again. No, it would not. It's just one fleeting second that it all works. And then every other frame of 57 frames is a disaster. So it just, it all comes together. Do you want to I talk think about, there's a picture of the back backdrop that I... Yeah. Do you want to talk for a minute about, um, like, you're not, like, the sessions are basically free. You're not charging anything for the sessions, but you're also not giving anything away. And so that, um, you know... No, anybody... no, no. These are... These are... Right. Sorry. Go ahead. Go, no, you go ahead. You know. Okay. So, yeah, what we do with these sessions are people come and they buy beautiful prints. The prints uh, are fine art prints. They're signed and dated. You know, they, they're around $300 and they're beautiful. I love this picture. Look at this. This is like the ultimate merging of human and dog. It's like one eye, one eye. I, I, and again, this woman, I was afraid she would say, is there a more normal frame? And no, she did not. She said, this is it. It's sort of like we've become one. And I love this picture. <laughs> but yeah, so, off so anyway, no, these odds? are, they're not free. No, go ahead. No, no, sometimes not at odds, but any photographer, no matter what you do, whether it's architectural photography or wedding photography, you know what it is because you are a photographer. The client is an attorney or a gastroenterologist, and they want to say, this is the picture. And you want to say, you're a gastroenterologist. Tell me, I know the picture. And so sometimes it's a tug of war. And, it, you know, look, it's a, a for-profit venture. They can do whatever they want. And, um, but yes, I like it when clients take my advice because I know better. Ha, 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 ha. Um, <laughs> and then what I just, you, you, you know, say the, the sessions aren't, you were going to say the sessions aren't really free, but what? Well, no, 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 no. We do it because what happens is the pet resort, a pet resort will, ha you know, again, you want to show size. Look at that. The, the specific pet resort will, you know, have me come by. Their clients will get pictures, sessions done with their, with their clients. And then they come to my studio. The, the, the one trade off is always, they have to come to my studio. I don't do stuff online. I don't, I'm not Shutterfly and I'm not, you know, some mail order place, I'm me. And they come to my studio where we can go over and I can say, look, this is the frame, the head turned. And they go, what about the other one? I'm like, no, trust me, this is, it's a, it's a give and take. It's a human um, interaction. So they have to come to the studio. And again, the prints start around $300 and it's, uh, it's beautiful and it's lucrative right, and for the, sure. And the whole, the whole point is for people to get nice um, wall prints for their home to hang in their home. So it's not an online thing and you're not giving away any files or they're not. In, <laughs> and you, you, are you even Correct. selling the files? People, can the client even purchase a file? People can, people can purchase the files, but it's really, um, it's not what it's about. People want to sort of steer your business into the way they want you to do business. And, I always say, and my wife Maya says, this is our business and this is the way we do business. This is about a fine art print. It's about a tangible fine art print. This is what I want you to have. I don't, I don't care so much that you want the file. If you want to put it on Facebook, put it on Facebook. But, um, you know, for me, in an iPhone world, in a digital world, I'm selling prints to put on your wall, to be framed by a framer. These are not five by sevens or eight by tens. Um, you know, these are custom. I print these and they're beautiful. 13 by 19, 17 by 22s. We go bigger. And that's what I want you to have. I want you to have something tangible, something when they feel the beautiful print. There's a, a young woman named Savannah. I love this picture. Savannah has like 19 dogs and this is the, the tiniest of all of them. Um, <laughs> And I, again, I think there's a, somewhere there's a, another, you know, boom, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. I know this girl. So, here. okay. So this is, yes, you do know this girl and, uh, she, you know, she is absolutely beautiful and her dog is, it's just a picture. And if you go, I think I sent on the next picture, 
Let's see. Um, oh, no, I didn't. But um, Genevieve, there was, I, there was a picture in there somewhere of the set uh, to just show you. It's just a really basic set. And, oh, there it is. you know, there you could, well, there it is. It's just, you know, that's, it's just, you know, sometimes the dog is distracted by food and you're just trying to, in between, get a picture. I think if I'm not mistaken, the next picture is the backdrop. And there you go. All of those pictures came from that. It's my so, proudest moment. Do you ever, do you ever get people <laughs> I mean, here? Who, it's just, who... you know, sort of. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, it's, it's, I mean, it's sort of this, you know, this, you know, sleight of hand. It's sort of like, you know, there it is. You see the cat litter, the bag of cat litter on the left that's holding down my windy backdrop. That's actually a different backdrop, not my beautiful um, Jenny Lehman backdrop, but that's it. You see the shade, you see the crap light, what we call, I call crap light. Crap light is everything outside of that three foot area of shade. Um, it's open. You can see there's no clouds in the sky. It's a bright, sunny day. And I'm just, what am I doing? I'm using the van to protect me from the sun. I'm setting up my backdrop and there's my set. And I have three feet to work with and everything outside of that shadow line is crap light. Do you ever get people who like want to push back and say, oh, well, you know, I don't, I don't want those light stands in there. Can you Photoshop those stands out? Or, or I notice a lot of the image sort of have the frayed edge of the backdrop in it. Do you ever get any pushback from people on those? Okay. Yes, I get, usually I don't have the light stands like this. Normally this I like just because he was in the television business. And so I thought he would like the light stands. Normally the light stands are a little clunky modern thing that I don't normally have in the pictures. Um, but the frayed, of the, uh, frayed ed edge of the backdrop, for sure, I get a lot of pushback. Not a lot of pushback. I get pushback from sometimes people say, can you crop that out? It's my silly aesthetic. I like it. I, some people don't like it, but it's, it's mine, you know? So, I mean, yeah. So anyway. Well, and so this project, by the way, that, you know, it sort of was the basis when I started the senior projects. And I thought, how can I possibly shoot 500 seniors from Yorktown High School? I immediately thought of the dogs and I thought, I, I know how to do this quickly. Now we're not doing the exact same thing, but I, I just thought I can do this because I, I'm, I'm good at fast portrait photography. <laughs> so, um, okay, so those, those are beautiful. And obviously when we get into looking at some of the pictures of the kids, uh, you're gonna see recurring themes in them uh, from the dog portrait. So I thought it was kind of interesting to kind of show the perspective or, or the genesis of the whole project from starting with the dog thing and how it has has uh, moved on into into this senior in, integrated into this senior project. So let, let's go ahead and start talking about some of these things. So what was your so talk a little bit about your um, your motivation and your inspiration to kind of get this thing going. All right. A month ago, maybe two months ago, there was a conversation and there was a thread on Facebook about um, right when the when the COVID quarantine began back in March, there was a, a conversation on Facebook about the front page front porch portraits. Um, Paul Giroux, a Giroux, our friend, was doing gorgeous front porch projects, and, and then Paul, of course Paul it kind actually, of spread. Let's give credit because Paul was actually, as far to my knowledge, was the first person doing them, and he made some really Correct. hauntingly beautiful pictures of families in his little small five thousand. Uh, population uh, town that he lives in in Wisconsin and we actually Paul was the subject of the second show that we did and and anybody that's watched that knows that Matt um, participated with me in the first uh, the first couple of shows that I did right. here so anyway so we talked to Paul and then about a lot it. of right and I think then a lot of people started doing from front porch I keep saying front page front porch portraits and it got a little watered down from what Paul uh, did on the the west coast and what what Jason Grow and Sean Henry were doing on the the East Coast, sort of, you know, I don't know, I don't want to like sound elitist, but it it became, you know, Paul and Jason and Sean are, are longtime photojournalists and they had an eye and it got a little watered down, I think. So somebody about two months ago said on a thread, Matt, are you going to do these front porch portraits? And knowing that my friend Paul was doing them, I responded in a comment. This is a woman named Candace, a friend on Facebook. I said, nah, I don't know. A lot of people are doing them. And 
she said, what about seniors? And I said, I, she showed me the comment recently and I said, huh, interesting. And then I guess I just parked that idea in my head and two months went by. And, um, and so I guess the idea had been planted. Then about two and a half weeks ago, I went outside to take a picture of my daughter in her spring fling dress, you know, the, the spring dance at Yorktown High School. Alexandra is not a senior. Oh, there she is. Um, and she looked beautiful. And she, you know, I mean, it was just, we were standing in my street and I was looking for a nice backlight. And, you know, there was a feeling of melancholy. And I thought, oh, that's beautiful. And, you know, that's my across the street neighbors, Azalea right there. So I guess, you know, phase part two of the idea, you know, came into my head. And then a couple of hours later, I was lying in bed at 1.30 in the morning. This is a true story. And I had an idea um, to which Alexandra said famously, this sounds weird, you shouldn't tell people that. Um, but I had this idea and I thought, wait, why can't I do portraits like I do the dog pit portraits, sort of quick, but moving, evocative senior portraits. Um, sort of not like this picture that we're seeing. I mean, this would be sort of the classic senior portrait. You know, you take a, a boy or a, a boy or girl and you go into the tall grass or the tulip field and you make kind of a, a nice picture like this. I was not thinking about that. I was thinking, what if I could use my journalistic side? I mean, I've been doing this for 35 years now and half of me was in journalism and half of me was in commercial photography. And I thought, what if I could do a cohesive portrait of a class that had lost a senior year. And as I've said so many times in the last two weeks, the key was that I thought, what if I could do 500, rather than 500 pictures like that picture you just saw of Alexandra in the tulips or the azaleas that have no glue what if I could do 500 portraits, as I say, 500 pieces of one puzzle? Then it was really intriguing to me because now you're saying, okay, how do you make it cohesive? Then I thought, oh, my old friend, the backdrop, this backdrop that's been with me for so many decades now or so many years now. And I thought, what if you could just sort of have a cohesive project that felt like each picture was related to the next? In this case, the backdrop that flies through all of these pictures, sometimes it's on the ground, sometimes it's blowing away in the wind, sometimes the parents are holding it, but the backdrop is the glue. You know, it's not just the backdrop anymore, it's the thing that makes these feel like they're part of one project. And I, you know, so it, an idea, I guess, was born. I went out the next morning and I said to my next door neighbor, Casey, who knows everybody. I said, Casey, get me five names of seniors at Yorktown High School. And an hour later, she had the contact info of five seniors at Yorktown High School. And I went out and I tried it. I did sort of like a test to see if it was viable. And, you know, my friend Jen Sargent, her son Henry is a football player at Yorktown. And I had shot a senior shoot of Henry many months ago, like, you know, we went to the track with the football field, with the sign that says Yorktown High School. It was sort of the standard senior shoot. But this time I said, Jen, can I borrow Henry again? I want to try a different idea. And I went over to the, her house and that was, you know, portrait number one. And, you know, I tried a few different things with five kids and I thought, OK, I think we could this could work. So, you know, I think. Um you know, just to kind of counter some of that, maybe some of that pushback that you might get from some of the photographers who think, you know, this is just another kind of porch projects kind of thing. I thought it might be a good idea to actually maybe talk to some of your subjects. And so uh, I'm actually going to bring on uh, three kids from Yorktown High School here into the program. So I want to welcome uh, Ella Robertson, that, who's at the top there, and... Um, Bijan Bose, who is in the bottom right there, and then Natalie English, who is in the red sweatshirt in the bottom left there under Matt. So welcome, guys. How you doing? Oh, hang on a minute. I got to get, let me get their audio on here. 
No, okay, everybody. Some... Go ahead and say, go ahead and speak. Say something, guys. I'm doing well. Hey, okay. Yeah, Natalie? doing well. All right, so we got you guys on. So, um, Ella, you were, I think, one of the first um, people that Mr. Mendelson reached out to. So, what did you think about it when you first kind of heard about this project? And, and what was it like when he came out to photograph you? Yeah, so um, I was one of the first 25 people to be photographed. And um, one of my closest friends, Jillian Wagner, and her mom reached out to my family and said, there's a professional photographer. He's trying to do this photo essay about the class of 2020 seniors. And he is trying to get all of them, but he's doing a test group first. And they attached some of the photos. And as I looked through, seeing my classmates, I was like, this is so cool. And um, I said, yes, dad, please say, um, we're gonna do it. And we were actually playing a family game during quarantine. And Mr. Mendelssohn called and said, what day would work for you? What is Ella about? And then the in the next couple of days, I was already coming out on my front step and bringing out like six different things ready to <laughs> take the photo shoot. So it was really neat. And I was not expecting, I didn't even know he was a professional photographer before I even took it. And it was so cool. Wait, just wait, to go you mean you had never stage. heard of him? <laughs> no, <laughs> I knew Alexandra, oh. <laughs> but yeah. Well, um, let's, let's back up just a minute and kind of start from the beginning. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming when you guys found out that school was going to be closed at first, you were kind of like, woohoo, no more school, you know, party time going early summer. And then maybe, uh, later it started to kind of set in and, oh shoot, you know, now no more school. That also means, you know, we're not going to be able to have graduation. We're not going to be able to have the prom. We're not going to be able to have the spring fling dance. We're not going to be able to participate in spring sports. So, so how did you guys kind of feel when those kind of things started to, uh, started to become real? I mean, it set in pretty quickly that we are not going to experience all these things like graduation and prom. Um, I mean, I was looking the other day just at um, senior photos that we had taken at the end of junior year um, when we got our portraits done and I saw the picture with my cap and gown, I realized that's the only one I'm ever going to have. You know, there's no, there's going to be no picture in front of Constitution Hall or anything like that. So it's kind of crazy. How about you, Bijan? Yeah, um, like Natalie said, it's sudden pretty quick for me too. Um, at first, I was a little happy that I'm not going to have any more schoolwork, basically, except for online work, of course. Um, but I also realized that I'd be missing out on prom, graduation, all of these rites of passage that I think every teenager should be able to experience. And uh, I was pretty, that bummed me out pretty badly. Well, I guess, I guess I was wrong to a certain degree. It's like, it wasn't that school was canceled because I guess you guys are still doing online classes, right? So you still have to do all the work, but you're not really getting to have all the fun. Yeah. yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. it's not, not much work, but still <laughs> so natalie how about you when you first heard about this project uh, how did you find out um, about it how did you find out about it and what did you think about it and then what was it like when matt actually came out to photograph you so my friend john had actually texted me and he said hey there's this photographer that came to my house do you want his phone number and at first i was like who is this shady guy coming to your house? What? Like, <laughs> don't give my phone number. I don't know who this is. Um, that does then, sound weird. Because, <laughs> I mean, I got very limited information at the beginning. Um, but then the very next day, my parents had called me into uh, the living room. And they said, Natalie, there's this professional ph photographer who's taking these senior photos and I think it'd be really interesting and you know because I saw some examples and I was like wow you know this is really interesting and so I signed up um I checked the google form and for like the first three entries I did it was like these slots are all taken um but then I eventually signed up for a day and you know it was awesome it was really cool so this is um one of the pictures that Matt made of Natalie so how did I you love feel that about picture. that? I mean, how did you feel like, you know, so what do the kids 
uh, I'm assuming you guys are in, in communication somewhere. And I mean, is there like an Instagram feed or something that you guys are following? So, I mean, is, do you guys get feedback on your pictures or, I mean, what do you, how has that been going? I mean, we, we can see um, the mass Instagram and all the photos with all the other students. And it's really cool to, you know, learn more about our senior class because there, there are a lot of students that I've seen and, you know, I didn't know that they had this sort of aspect about them. So it's really cool to learn about that. Yeah, yeah I saw I in, in one of the news uh, clips that we'll look at in a minute, somebody was talking about how, um, you know, they found out that one student that they that they knew was really into dogs and another student actually built his own telescopes and things like that. So, I mean, has it been has it been sort of a real bonding mechanism for you guys? Yeah, it's really made me realize what certain people in my class can do and I didn't know a lot about them. And if we hadn't had this project, I probably would never have really known. So it's really cool. Yeah. So Bijan, let me pull your picture up here. So tell me what it was like when uh, Matt came out to photograph you and how the whole, how the whole process went. Now I'm guessing because so you're, a, I'm guessing because you're a wrestler, had you guys been able to complete your season? So had wrestling, you were you yep. able to finish wrestling or did you have to, were you cut short as well? Thankfully, we were able to finish the season. So what was it like when Matt came out to photograph you? What was the process like and how did it, how did it kind of make you feel? <laughs> were you into it? I mean, at first I, w I became aware of the project through um, Mr. Mendelson's Instagram, but I hadn't really considered doing it until my wrestling coach called me up and, uh, my wrestling coach, Will Marlowe, um, I think he knows Mr. Mendelson. He told me that I should do the project, and uh, he told me it'd be a really cool thing to do. So that's when I decided that I would do it. Um, and Mr. Mendelson uh, came to my house, and there were also people from the Washington Post there. And oh, you were on one of the, on the media parade day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was on media parade day. So that was pretty cool. And uh, he just had me pose with my wrestling shoes and my headgear. Um, there wasn't much talking because we had to remain 20 feet apart at all times. So um, afterwards, I emailed him all of my, um, like my biography, because every senior is supposed to put a biography with their, um, with their picture. And uh, overall, it was just a really cool experience. And my family was absolutely elated at the idea of having a, a professional photographer come to my house and photograph and photograph. It's something that I've never done before. And it was just a really cool experience. So have, um, Hey Greg, can I, whoops. Sure, Matt, go ahead. Jump in. I just jump in for one second. Like if you go back to Bijan's picture, it sort of hits at the theme of the, of, of the project, which is that, you know, these are not elaborate photographs, but I want each kid to sort of, I want it to feel like something is missing. Hence, I don't want Bijan in his, wrestling singlet you know i that's not what i'm looking for i'm not looking for him i want to say i'm in jeans and i'm i got a sweatshirt on but i got my headgear as if something is wrong there's something missing you know like i should be wrestling i should be um you know swimming i you know so i just love this picture because of its simplicity and that's what i wanted i i knew when i was going to shoot Bijan that i wanted him in that kind of you know, that wrestling crouch, you know, ready to go, John Smith. Um, and, you know, the headgear is important. Um, otherwise, it just feels like, okay, maybe it's, you know, it's just half-assed a little bit. But this is just sort of just, you know, it just has that timelessness. It has that, you know, Ken Burnsy look to it, that it's just 100 years from now, I could look at this picture and have a glimpse of sort of a season lost. And, and so... What I'm hope what I've hoped is that all these pictures don't become crammed in with trophies and this is I'm not trying to create a trophy case picture of all the stuff that I did in 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 senior year. I just wanted to have the trappings of something that's missing a little bit. So anyway, so what do the uh, Matt? What do the kids get? Um, do they get a file or a print or what do you? The kids, the kids will get a file. Um, they can do with whatever they want with it. Um, we haven't really gotten down the road of what, you know, the, 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 the process is that they can get the file, they can do it whatever they want. 
if we want to, you know, someday down the line, they want to do a, um, you know, a fine art print a la the dogs, we'll cross that bridge when we can. I'm not really kind of looking forward to the intersection of not-for-profit and for-profit right now. Right now I'm thinking about finishing this project of 500 portraits, but the, the, the session, there's, you know, it's a photo essay in which there's no cost to take part in. They can have the file and they can do whatever the heck they want with it. I mean, it's my pleasure in that sense, it's open source. Later, when we're finished, if somebody wants to, a parent wants to, you know, circle back around and say, Matt, can we buy a print? I'm sure we can <laughs> figure that out since we have no income right now. Um, but that's that's a different story. And we haven't really, um, we're not going to really entertain that right now. So we'll, we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, I want to jump over to Ella really quickly. So here's Ella with her picture. So Ella, what do you think, what does this say about you? What did, what was Matt trying to convey about you in this picture? Yeah. So I came out, um, with my James Madison sweatshirt on and he clearly knew that that was where I was going to attend college. And he asked me what I was going to major in. And I told him that I was wanting to be a special education teacher. And he could tell from, as I talked about special education and working with kids with disabilities, which is really my passion. He could tell that wearing the Best Buddies hat that I had gotten from the Friendship Walk this year would have been a great thing to just have on my head and holding it and showing how proud I was um, of being in this club and all that I do with kids with disabilities. And I want to continue to do that. And so I really enjoyed the hat and it was a nice way of saying I'm thinking of Best Buddies and um, this is who I am. So I think he was trying to pull out in this photo the love of best buddies and working with kids with disabilities that I have. And you're also, you've got on a James Madison uh, sweatshirt. So I'm assuming that you're going to a JMU next year. So go Dukes. I, I have am. One of, my own, one of my own kids graduated from JMU a couple of years ago. So you're going to yeah, love go that. Yeah, go Dukes. I'm really excited. <laughs> All right, Natalie, let me, I'm going to pull your picture up here. So you want to talk a little bit about um, kind of what this says about you and your personality and, and kind of how the process yeah. was and things Mr. Mendelson kind of did with you to try to try to bring mm -hmm. out your, so, your story. Yeah. I had a, I had a phone call with him the morning of my shoot. Um, and we sort of talked about some of the things that made me, me. Um, and I told him that uh, I'm a two sport athlete, you know, I'm a swimmer and I play water polo. Um, so he wanted to highlight more um, the water polo part of it. Um, so I came out with my swim bag and my ball and my goggles and all that. Um, and it was really cool to just, you know, show that. Um, and that really, it brings me so much joy to do both. And I got to um, really showcase both swimming and water polo with that. So. So, um, swimming is a fall sport, right? So it was water polo. Is that the, that's the sport that you missed out on this year? Uh, well, Yorktown doesn't have a, uh, water polo, uh, team, uh -huh. but that would be a sport. Yeah. Okay. So are you guys, um, so I know, uh, Matt has mentioned to me that he's done like 150 or so kids so far out of the 500. So that leaves like another 350 that he's not photographed yet. So are all your friends like all jealous that you guys have? have had yours done yet and are they looking forward to having theirs done? Yeah, I know a lot yeah. of my friends are looking forward to it. Um, since I was one of the first 25, um, Mr. Mendelson said, the deal is going to be, if I take your photo, you need to give me five other people. So <laughs> I was able to, I was able to find five other people that he would be able to get in the 25 to test this project. And so, one of my favorite ones that I gave him was Tariqua and um, she's in the inclusion shirt and laughing and she's also in Best Buddies and she's deaf and she has a great background. You should check out her photo. I think um, we're going to, I think I'm, I'm sure that Tariqua is in the group of pictures probably. that we're going to look yeah, at. Yeah, she Matt is. Sent me. She is. She yeah. is. Yeah. So I know a lot of my friends are excited to get theirs done and they, some of them have already gotten them done. I think, I think Matt's hey. interaction with Chariqua was the thing that sort of solidified the fact that he was doing the right thing. Cause that yeah. was, she was also, fortunately she was one of the very early ones. Yeah. Correct. 
So and Natalie, you know, Greg, yeah, go ahead, Greg, Matt. if I can jump in here, let me just things about, first of all, there have been s certain people who have been very instrumental in helping me get this going. Um, Susie Wagner and her daughter, uh, Jillian, um, a senior at Yorktown, uh, are, you know, have been helping me organize and create the web form. Ella is my student liaison. When I say Ella, I need a swimmer. Ella gives me <laughs> two minutes later, I have a text and Ella says, here's a swimmer. And she, you know, in the early part of the process where people didn't know what we were doing, Ella was so instrumental in sort of just facilitating, you know, I don't have a senior at the school. I don't have a senior manifest. I don't know anybody. So Ella, I'd say, Ella, you know, we need, we need diversity. I want to make sure this is inclusive. And so Ella was really important. Um, so, um, you know, and, and the other thing I will say before we start looking at the actual pictures is that when you look at like Natalie's picture, you know, Natalie, you know, Natalie joked earlier that her eyes were closed, but I love the joy in her eyes closed. And yes, normally you would have a picture of portrait of somebody looking at the camera, but I don't know. I just love the joy of this picture. Did we do pictures with our water polo headgear on with those puffy ears? Of course we did. Um, and they're, they're nice too, but I just sort of like this picture. Um, did we do pictures of Ella in her coxswain? Ella is a coxswain on the crew team. So we did pictures of with her, with her little transmitter radio and her, her crew jacket. But I just like the simplicity in that case of her with her best buddies uh, hat. So as, as we start to look at the actual body of pictures, you'll see that they've gotten probably <laughs> increasingly more complicated, not complicated, but you know, the ideas are starting to flow now. So that's what I think, but yes, I there's, think a, you know, of, that's what I kind of think makes your project more unique is I think that you're doing one, a large volume of people and you are finding those things that are actually this, you're, you're telling the individual story and you're finding every, you know, the things that are unique about each kid and you're telling each kid's individual story. And I think that's what really makes the project so powerful, at least for me. Right. I think the object is to do it in a way that is not bop you over the head. Again, I don't want a trophy case worth of stuff in the picture. Um, there are some people, uh, seniors who have come or parents who have said, can we get this in the picture, this in the picture? I don't want it to get crammed. I want it to be sort of just a hint at what they do. Um, you know, if you, for instance, a, a drummer named Henry, um, I just wanted a picture of him with his drumsticks in his back pocket, you know, sort of like the, the cover of uh, Born on the Fourth of July, Bruce Springsteen. I just wanted, that's all it needs to say is just those two drumsticks. So I don't want it to be crowded too much. So I guess maybe we should just look at some pictures and I can explain. Yeah, so um, Natalie, you and B. John, you have any parting words for all the folks that are watching this? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know. This is, this is a really awesome project and it's something that makes our school unique um, and it's really unifying to all the seniors. So we just want to thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Whoops. Nope, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, no. Okay, so they're, they're... <laughs> like Natalie said, um, thank you for doing this, Mr. Mendelson. Um, I think it makes our class unique because not everybody gets to do this. Like everybody has a graduation, everybody has a prom, but not everybody has a professional photographer coming to their houses and taking pictures of them. And uh, especially just, wearing a mask just... and gloves, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead, B. John. I didn't mean to yeah. interrupt you. All right, guys. Well, listen, I really appreciate you guys uh, coming on with us and thanks so much for your patience. You know, while we went through uh, all the dog stuff, I appreciate you guys being there and um, good luck to you guys. I wish you guys the best in the future and everybody, you know, knock it out of the park as college students. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks guys. Bye. All right, Matt. So, so yeah, let's, that was pretty cool. Um, so, all right. So before we get into the image, I just have one, like one little thing I want to talk about here. And, you know, photographers everywhere yeah. are really affected by this crisis and everybody's been affected by it in, in different ways. And one thing I want to talk about just a little bit was, uh, is mental health. And, um, you know, when I, when this crisis started, I talked to Matt on the phone just about maybe probably not every day, but maybe every other day. And, Every day that I talked to him, you know, I could just hear sort of the depression building in his voice. 
Um, you know, it was the financial stress of not being able to work. It's the, you know, Matt's unfortunately had some health issues, recent health issues that are, have been on his mind. And so with all this idle time he had at home, I just felt like, um, the depression was really wearing on him. And, uh, and so just every day for like a month, I could just sort of hear him, his voice just kind of spiral down. And there was a point where uh, he started posting pictures of some of the celebrity shoots that he'd done and some of the other pictures that he'd done. And he started telling sort of behind the scenes stories about those. And that kind of lifted him up a little bit. And then, you know, I didn't hear from Matt for a couple of days. And I really wasn't sure what was going on. And then I saw, uh, I saw a, TV, uh, a TV news clip of him doing an interview with the local uh, NBC affiliate. And I saw Matt on TV with a big smile on his face. And every time he opened his mouth, his eyes lit up. And it was a complete different person. It was a completely different person from the person that I'd been talking to on the phone for the past month. And so, you know, this project has been really good for him. It's, and I talk to a lot of other photographers on the phone uh, quite often. You know, that's one of the things I try to do. I try to reach out to a bunch of friends and see how they're doing. And, and I talk to some other people who are a little bit isolated. And, and, you know, the idle time at home is really wearing on a lot of people with the, with the financial stress and everything that's going on. And so I really want to try to encourage uh, the photographers out there that are watching this to find something, you know, don't just sit at home uh, alone and be isolated. Find something that you can sink your teeth into a little bit and, and get out and do something. You know, for me, I've tried to do, tr tried to learn everything I can learn about live streaming. I, you know, I'm start I started this process as sort of with a, with a business case in mind as sort of maybe being able to make money on it in the future as a service that I can offer um, along with my photography. And, and this real picture thing is something that I do for fun, but I've really invested, I've watched hundreds of hours of tutorials and really tried to learn how to do this. And I, you know, I still have a lot to learn, but again, I want to just encourage everybody not to just like sit at home in despair, find something, uh, find something that you can sink your teeth into because it really like in Matt's demeanor and, and as you can see the enthusiasm that he's talking about this project now, it has really made a huge difference in, uh, where he was a month ago, uh, and where he is now. So anyway, do you want to, do you want to talk about that at sure. all, Matt? Uh oh, did he freeze? Oh, we may have lost him. Nope, I'm back. Okay, there he is. Now we got you. Yep. So, do you want to talk about the mental health aspect of it at all, or? Well, you know, it's many years ago during the, I don't know if it's mental health, but I'm a photographer who likes to work, and. You know, uh, here's the only story I can tell you. On In 2008, the night Barack Obama was elected, I was no longer in the media, so to speak. I, I, my newspaper days were, were behind me. I was a wedding photographer, a portrait photographer, and I was sitting on the couch in my home watching a historic election take place. And we were watching CNN and I kept saying to Maya, I can't believe I'm not working. It just, it was sort of eating at me that I was sitting on the couch. I said, I can't believe I'm not covering this. It's so important, it's so historic. And they said, the crowds are building in Grant Park. There's a million people in Chicago and the crowds around the White House are building. And I looked at my wife and it was like 1030 at night. And I said, I'll be right back. And I just grabbed my camera and I grabbed some credentials that had long ago expired and I threw them around my neck and I ran out of the house and I sped down Military Road in Arlington and I didn't know where I was going to go. And logistics come into your head and I thought, oh my God, where am I going to park? You know, if I go to the White House, is it going to be nowhere to park? There's a crowd of 15,000 people at the White House. And I thought, oh, you idiot, the Lincoln Memorial. You know, Abraham Lincoln, Emancipation, um, Marion Anders, I have a dream, MLK, why don't you go there, you idiot? So instead, I veered off, I went to the Lincoln Memorial, thinking there would be a crowd of 15,000 people there too. And I got to the Lincoln Memorial. Ah, we're losing you, Matt. Radio. 
uh, start start over. And, we lost you. Start over. You know, lost that's you. what journalists do. That's what photographers do. And I made a picture that ended up up oh, up. Oh. You there? Yeah. Start over from where you um, you went to the Lincoln. That that was the place to go. That was the you know, and I went there, and I thought there would be a a crowd just like the crowd outside the White House. And I got to the Lincoln, and instead there were like 23 people. Um, it's hard to see uh, on, on a low-res image, but they're all crowded around a little transistor radio um, listening to Barack Obama's election. And, you know, I made a picture. I would have been sitting on the couch. It ended up in the New York Times the next day. It ended up, you know, it just it became a cool picture. Um, so I don't know if it's mental health. It's my mental health. <laughs> Maybe I just when there's something happening, I want to be part of it. And I just don't like sitting on the couch. We were doing puzzles for two months here and I wasn't taking a single picture. And I just thought I need to get off the couch again. It was sort of like the Lincoln Memorial Night. And I had this idea and I went out and I did it. So as far now, I know you were doing a lot of puzzles. Is that where the um, the backdrop becomes sort of the puzzle piece? Was that all, all part of the uh, the grand plan? You're doing all these puzzles and you were inspired to use the backdrop as sort of a puzzle piece? I don't know. Pictures? Maybe it's the sub, maybe it's the subliminal plan. I don't know. I just I wanted the, the, the essay. I wanted this to be a journalistic enterprise. There are two halves of me in my life of 35 years as a photographer. There's a, a journalist that I worked for USA Today for 10 years and UPI before that. And there's a commercial photographer. This was the, the journalistic side. I didn't want to just do portraits, you know, senior pictures, you know, if I would go to Bishop's Garden at the cathedral and make nice pictures with the roses. I wanted this to be a photo essay from the journalist part of me. And the backdrop, it needed to have cohesion as a project. It needed to have glue that ties each picture to the next picture. And the backdrop just is kind of a, you know, a cohesive, goofy element. Um, you okay. know, once we start with the pictures, I'll be able to talk about what we're, show you what we're talking about. Well, let, let's talk a little bit just about some of the nuts and bolts. So I know I've already had one question, uh, I think, from Paul Giroux yep. about, um, let me see if I can find it. He was asking, how do you, how are you scheduling the sessions? So that's, that's all my wife, Maya and Susie and her daughter, Jillian. Um, Jillian is the schedule master. And it I, I don't think I could do this project. Previously, Ella was helping me find people and I was scribbling names and numbers on the back of bank statements in my car, you know, and I thought that's not a really effective method of, of doing this project, especially if we, get past a hundred or so Susie came with her daughter. They set up a, a, a Google form. Um, this is what I'm so not good at is organization. And um, the kids sign on, they sign up, they give a phone number, address, email. We have all their contact information. They write a brief description. I like fishing. I love dogs. I, you know, I won the chemistry prize and that gives me a little bit. Then I, call them. And so each night, Jill, uh, Susie will send me the next day's schedule. We do them half an hour at a time. Why do we take half an hour when it only takes maybe seven minutes to do the portrait? Because we're doing it very safely. We don't want congregating. We don't want groups of people coming. No, the tennis team can't be shot together. We don't want one person waiting for the next person to finish. We don't want any of that. We want to do it at their house by themselves and you're at the driveway, uh, you're at the garage, I'm at the sidewalk and, or you're at the front porch, I'm on the, the grass. So it's very slow and deliberate. We, I could do this whole class in a week, I think, if there were no coronavirus, but that's not the case. So we have to, you know, safety is important. And so I come, I'm, I'm wearing a mask, I'm wearing gloves, I never get close to anybody. And the only people who get close are the parents. And so it, it takes a long time. But the, the, the web form is the key because otherwise it would just be chaos, you know. And so now I, I go and I just click on the, 
click on the, the, the Google map and it takes me to my next one and I go and I shoot it and then I get in the car and I click on the Google map that takes me to the next one. Luckily, this is one high school, not one state. And so they're all within six miles of each other tops. Um, it usually says, you know, the next one is eight minutes away. So it's, it's, it's good. I'm, so I'm in my car and I'm just going from. So, yeah. so how many, how many are you doing per day? Uh, what's a typical day like and how much time you spend per kid? So we, we do every half an hour. We start at 10 o'clock in the morning and we go till seven o'clock at night. Um, Susie and <laughs> my wife said, Susie, he needs lunch. And so they schedule a lunch break, but I could just keep going and shooting. And so we, we do once every, one every half an hour. We had down, we had gotten it down to, um, um, here, Christina has a question. How many, well, how much time do you spend? It's the question you're answering. Bel so. Yeah. So I go and each one, we had it down to 20 minutes. That was too tight. Half an hour is good. It takes me 15 minutes to, to make a picture. Sometimes it takes me four minutes to, to take a picture. Um, I'm not, I'm not painting the Sistine Chapel here. I'm taking a nice portrait very quickly. Like the dogs, I, I'm I'm able to do it quickly. I I've known I've been doing that for 35 years, so I, I'd say 15 minutes is what I do, and then a 10 minutes to drive to the next kid, and that leaves me five minutes to check my emails. So, um, um, so there, I'm not spending a lot of time. I don't want to spend a lot of time. Get in, get out. Nobody gets hurt. That's the that's the overriding mantra of this project. Um, I, mean, no I meant contact. to say that that, that, that um, was the, the get in, get out quick, nobody gets hurt was the wedding advice you gave me when we first talked about, when I first talked about, talked with you about <laughs> becoming a wedding photographer. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a mantra that applies to a lot of things in life. Get in, get out, nobody gets hurt. And this is all about safety. And so I don't want to spend a lot of time with the kid. I say kid, young adult, senior. Um, I, I want to just make my picture and, and get out. So you're not trying to make the greatest picture. Some of my favorite pictures that we're going to see, the backdrop is flopping down. You can see mom poking out of the backdrop. I don't care, That's it's beautiful. It's like when Sally Mann comes out of the dark room and looks at a print that's covered in, in stains and she goes, that's beautiful, you know? I like it when it's a little messy. I'm not looking for perfection here because of the constraints of coronavirus safety. And because I think when you're doing it fast and you get those, the backdrop falling down, it just makes it, I like the hands. I like that the, the only people who are in the frame are family members. And sometimes, you know, they're, they're wearing gloves, they touch the backdrop, then we wipe down the backdrop. And I'm not looking for perfection. 30 so, minute slots, 15 minutes, 15 minutes of shooting. And about how many per day? I don't know, whatever that today, I mean, like, I don't know, 15 or something. I mean, somebody do the math, but I start at 10 o'clock and sometimes we have some people we add in, um, you know, and I would say 15 a day. I, I could do it faster, but um, that's not what this project is about. I want, I want to have time. Um, Paul says, I like the flaws. It makes it human. I like the flaws too. I, I, I don't want perfection. I want this to be like a homegrown project. For instance, Peter, um, who has cerebral palsy, um, why, why, and why don't is we one wait? of the most why don't revered. We why don't we yeah. wait until we okay. get in the picture and then okay. we talk about it? I just want to show like a... Yeah, yeah. So Matt's daughter, Alexandria, ac I'm sorry, Matt's daughter, Alexandra, actually shot uh, some video of Matt out doing one of these shoots. And so uh, I see a lot of questions asking about the social distancing and all that kind of stuff. And I think if you actually watch this video here, you're gonna get a really good feel for kind of how they're done. So here's a little video of Matt actually doing a senior shoot. All right, so I've just gotten to, uh, to Charlotte. Charlotte's a senior at Yorktown High School in Arlington, Virginia. I'm going to shoot her picture, her portrait for the Not Forgotten, the Yorktown Seniors of 2020 project. And uh, you can see my very complicated car setup. I've got my camera and my backdrop and my mask on that's why i can't speak and why do i have a kickboard 
Well, because we're going to do a special portrait of Charlotte, who's a swimmer, and Charlotte is standing right over here. We're not going to get closer than 20 feet the whole time. So let's go, uh, let's go make a picture. All right, so this is going to be a different one today. We've done lots of lacrosse players, and we've done uh, lots of football players. We've done lots of different kinds of kids who do different things, but we're gonna get Charlotte here, who's a swimmer at Yorktown, and we are going to do a picture right here. We are going to uh, make a portrait here. Um, so hang on. So Charlotte, first one, don't smile for a second. There you go, just like that. Just like that, that looks great. All right. Charlotte, stand up a little bit. Yeah, just play. Right. Yeah, I know you're in a hot tub. There we go. I, that's it. Put that other arm like that. You just had it like that. Stay there. And again, no smile. That's killer right there. Killer right there. Stay there. That looks amazing. Stay there. Horizontal here. Good. Stay there with that smirk. There we go, like that. Right there. Good. Good. Go back in the water. I like in the water. I can sit in the water. Huh? I can sit in the water. Yeah, no, that's good. Just like you are. That's it, right there. So, the funny thing is, Charlotte, is that the first time you emailed me about pictures, the first thing I said to you is, are you whimsical? And you said yes. And I said, okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good because this is the picture for that. Ready? Here we go. Look right here. Oh my God, it's amazing. Ready here, <laughs> Charlotte, this is so great. Here we go. We'll do one more. I'm just checking it. Hang on, I'm just checking. Ready, here we go. There we go. And then right there, we'll do a laughing picture. Ready? Good, and now serious again. That's it little smirk a little bit smirk that's it good coming down that is killer charlotte i i so appreciate it because you know each of these pictures is supposed to be sort of about what you're missing yeah and and i i had just this vision of like what about a hot tub in place of a pool it's awesome all right i'll see you back down there off on you ready go let me see if that worked that was killer All right, so that's kind of kind of how it flows, right? Yep. That's it. You could see yeah. we're we're far apart. And and by the way, I'm not that out of shape, but anybody who is working in a mask all day long, you just realize it really you can't breathe after a while. So, you know what's funny I, I hear is the huffing looks, and puffing. Some of the kids that were on on earlier even mentioned that like when you first showed up and we were talking behind the mask, they couldn't really understand what you were asking them. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, you know, it, you, you feel like you're huffing and puffing out there. But anyway, so that's, so, that's the process right there. So one final thing before we kind of get into the images, what you've gotten a ton of media attention on this thing. I mean, um, Washington Post, the local paper, why do you think that this particular project has gotten so much media attention? I don't know, you know, I mean, the I think this was kind of low hanging fruit, this project. It was low hanging fruit in the sense that it was out there for anybody to pick. And everybody was sort of in that mode of, let's post my senior picture on Facebook, my yearbook picture from 1997. And nobody was, everybody was walking past the low hanging fruit. And I just happened to say, oh my gosh, it's like just right there, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes when you go to the National Gallery of Art and you're standing in the modern section and there's a 12 foot by 12 foot by 12 foot canvas and it's all white and there's a straight line going across it and you hear somebody goes, oh, that's so easy. I could have done that, except that you didn't do that. And so in the sense, I guess I was the first person to sort of 
say, oh my God, we've all walked past this low hanging fruit and it's just out there. Why isn't anybody celebrating the seniors in a safe way? I thought I could do it safely because my experience of covering things for 35 years, I knew I could do it safely and I knew I could do it journalistically. And I think the journalistic part is what people respond to. All right, so let's jump into some of the pictures, Matt. Okay. So are we jumping? Is this it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is this is one of the early ones. This is again, as you go points on a graph, whenever you have a project, um, I've worked on lots of long term projects. One project I, I did is in its twelfth year right now. Um, uh, you have points on a graph. And this was one of the first points on a graph where I thought, you know, wow, this is cool. I like the backdrop. It's sort of this artificial backdrop in a natural setting. It sets the individual off. I, I just, it, it was one of the first pictures that I saw, that I, I took that said, yeah, this is kind of a season, a lost season. And I didn't want to make happy pictures. I mean, again, some of the pictures, Natalie, Tariqua, that we'll see are happy, but for the most part, I wanted it to be a record of, you know, a, a, a lost year. This is a, supposed to be, I should say, one of the things, you never should read the comments online, but I did read one comment after the Today Show and somebody commented on the Today Show, oh, these kids should just buck up and stop whining. I missed my prom and I missed my graduation in 1957 and I'm fine. This is not about missing prom and missing graduation. It's about your senior year of high school coming to an abrupt end four months before the end. That means nobody cleaning out their locker. That means no saying goodbye. That means no, it's like four months. It just, so anyway, this was the one of the first that I figured, this was actually the very first picture right here. This is Henry and this was the first test picture that I took and we were in the street and I thought, yeah, I think this is cool. This was the first, again, we're in the test, the test phase. I just, uh, Casey, Casey B, um, by the way, none of these seniors are identified with last names in, in, in online. Um, they can identify themselves once they take the picture, but I just go Casey B for not, so that we're not getting into uh, privacy issues. Um, so I looked at this picture and I just looked at his eyes and points on a graph. It said to me, okay, this is kind of Ken Burnsy. It feels almost, you know, if you take away the Yorktown sweatshirt and you put on an 1864, you know, um, uh, marching band thing, it just has that civil war. You can just look into the eyes and you can stare at the eyes forever. And I thought, again, points on a graph. It's like, okay, this is going to be cool. I think this is a good part, a good place too, where maybe we talk about like some of the gear that you're using. So I know you're shooting uh, the Sony cameras. And I think one thing that's going to shock everybody is to know that really none of these images have been in any kind of photo editing software that all like pretty much all these images that you're going to see, Matt has done simple camera to phone transfers. And so all the images that he shared with all these publications and these news organizations have really just been images straight out of the camera. And in fact, I was talking to him on the phone a couple of days ago and he was just l lamenting the fact that he'd been so busy that he hadn't had time to even download any cards. So he had all these cards filled with these images and had not even had a chance to download them. And then all the images he'd been sending out were straight out of the camera from, uh, and I think you're shooting a Sony a7, R3 with the 70 to 200 to eight, right? Yeah. And uh, yes, that I, I bring, I bring one lens and one body in my car. I don't even bring a camera bag. I mean, this is as stripped down as you get. And, you know, I'm not a gear person. I've never been a gear person. I love my Hasselblad with black and white film. I've never been like, I need to get the newest thing, but I have to say, and this will sound like an advertisement for Sony, but I don't think I could have done this project without this particular camera because A, it's so easy to lock on to the eyes and B, I can transfer so easily from my camera direct to my iPhone. I just, in camera, I look in the finder, I go, there's a picture, boom, there's a picture. And I just mark it, mark it, mark it. 
and then I just transfer it to my iPhone. I tweak it on my iPhone and voila, I uploaded it. You know, it, the cards have never been downloaded yet. They're sitting on my shelf. The actual, you know, um, you know, SD cards have yet to be downloaded in two and a half weeks. This has all and, been done out of camera. And I guess we should point out too that um, you're, they're they're all captured in color. So all the images are in color, and you're doing the you're doing the black and white conversions right. in the Snapseed app on your phone. Correct. And I'm not even that good at the Snapseed, but once you get it to look pretty good, I just kind of you know, lock on and just, it looks beautiful. I mean, they're amazing, you know? So this is yeah, actually all these Casey's images are straight uh, out twins. Of the camera. These are straight out of the camera images. Right. I mean, straight out of the camera and then converted to black and white to on black my, and white. Yeah, on sorry, my yeah. iPhone. Yeah. Um, this is, this is, this is um, Charlotte, Casey's sister, his twin. And again, one of the very early pictures Again, I like the backdrop going off. I like the crap in the garage. Um, I, you know, again, I want to I want to have the artificial constraint of the backdrop in this 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 odd backdrop. I, it's like the 2001 monolith. Um, it just feels very unnatural, but it isolates the subject. And then you get a, a brief glimmer of, you know, the garage, the porch, whatever. But I wanted to just show these are very talented kids. They're passionate about so many things. And I just wanted to reflect that. So this is Olivia and she's, uh, she's a lacrosse goalie and she has beautiful eyes. And I mean, you know, this one says go tight. So sometimes I'm going off the backdrop. Sometimes I want to see the backyard. Sometimes you want to go tight. You know, you just want to mix it up like a pitcher in a baseball game. You got your fastball, your curveball, and, you know, then you do a change up pitch sometimes. But this is this is just like sort of a fastball. It's just her beautiful eyes and you're just drawn into the picture. And it just feels like, again, there's a sense of, of loss. And that face and eye detection really does make a difference. I mean, the eyes are just so sharp here. It It does. It does. It does. OK, so this is an important picture. I mean, but important, that sounds egotistical. This is, um, this is an important picture to me in the process because this guy, Luke, this was picture number six or seven out of 150 so far. And I had shot Luke in the backyard. He was sitting on the chaise lounge in the backyard. And Luke said to me, after I finished kind of a boring portrait, Luke said to me, not, I didn't say to Luke, Luke said to me, would you like some motion? And I thought, yeah, I want some motion. And this is really where the project, you know, got going. I just thought, I just thought there was like a Greek discus thrower aspect to this and using that backdrop, using the patio. And suddenly it just felt like, it felt like a project suddenly. It felt like a little bit more artistic. And I thought, Thank you, Luke, for, for pointing me in the right direction. But then I thought, you can do lots of things. There was a famous book that every photographer who is our age remembers from 1982 or something like that. And it was called The Red Couch. And it was, I mean, one of the biggest best-selling photography coffee table books of all time, in which these two photographers drag their red couch, their crappy red couch, all across America. So the red couch was on a fishing boat in Gloucester and it was in the in the desert in California and it was in a church at a funeral. It, I mean, it was everywhere. And I sort of, this is my homage to the red couch. The backdrop just kind of floats through. And this was an important picture because it really sort of got me going with the ideas. Simple picture. Um, but this is a student from Nepal. I love her eyes. She's so beautiful. And, you know, there are a lot of students um, who are who have come from all over the world that live here in Arlington. You know, her dad is in Nepal. She lives here. And, you know, she's with a ceremonial dagger from her country. And again, it's not it's not the most complicated, but I just want each kid to have sort of, you know, something that they love about them in the in the photos. Okay, this is, you know, so now I'm starting to like, yes, you asked about the torn backdrop. I love the torn backdrop. I love that it was so windy this day. 
it was just crazy wind. So yeah, I love his, I love his, you know, I'm not trying to make happy pictures. I'm trying to make, you know, sort of meaningful pictures. And uh, the wind was killer. I mean, it was really hard to, to get the backdrop, not to blow, you know, to New Jersey. Um, you know, basically, um, I carry a bag of cat litter and I throw it on top of the stand. And um, I love this picture. Okay, another important early picture. Why? Um, it's fairly simple. Um, thank you, Howard. I appreciate it. Um, I went to high school with Howard Sterenbach. Um, this is an important picture because I was driving down Military Road in Arlington. I saw one of my dear friends. She was um, she was uh, talking to some friends. So in a church parking lot with their dogs, and so I did a U-turn and I, I pulled up next to them and I said, come on, ladies, move it along, Corona. And she said, oh, my God, I can't believe it's you, Matt. I was just telling my friend whose daughter goes to Yorktown High School um, about your project. Could she get photographed? And I said, of course. You know, what's your name? I said, what does your daughter like to do? And she looked at me and she said she likes to pray. And it sort of I thought she was going to say lacrosse or swimming. And again, a little point on a graph, but I said, oh my God, there are so many varied interests and um, passions of these kids that it's not just about lacrosse and soccer. It's sort of they're, they're and I thought, oh my God, that's, yeah, I'd love to photograph her. And so again, a simple, it's not complicated. All you need is a Bible. And that was it from the street, done. Not complicated. Don't complicate things. That's don't, really interesting. Don't, I don't make know it many, a trophy case picture. How many high school kids would? I mean, that's not a not a common response. You think you would get from a high school kid that they really like to pray? I think that's no, fantastic. but I mean, it was a wonderful response because it made me realize that I was trying to think, oh, this is going to be sort of like you know the sports parade, but you just realize that every kid has their own passion, and I wanted the picture. I want the pictures to reflect what they want to reflect, not what I'm telling. I don't know if Abby here plays a sport. I have no idea. And I don't care because as far as I'm concerned, this is what Abby is about. And this is what I'm um, so I'm happy to have gotten this picture. I think it's key, too, that her eyes are uplifted. So I think that's I think that just ties in yeah. to the fact that she's holding the Bible. Yep. Again, all of these pictures are on sides of roads and, you know, all with the same darn lens. This kid is amazing. The, the photograph, the large barrel, uh, the photograph, the telescope, uh, the large barrel telescope on the left is completely home built. Um, the, the, in his apartment. And so he said he had to do it on his uh, the balcony of his apartment and he had to do it without power saw, saws, to power tools because he didn't want to disrupt his neighbors. The barrel of, I don't know, it's the barrel, it's not called a barrel, but um, the body of that large telescope is um, essentially poster tubing. He, he's wrist with some kind of, uh, some kind of reinforcement and um, he apologized. He sent me some early pictures and he said, well, right now I have it hooked up with an adapter to my iPhone. So when you see Saturn here, it won't look so, so great. But then he followed up a week later and he sent me, he said, my adapter came and now I have a real camera attached to it. And he sent me a freaking picture of Saturn. I could see the rings and I thought, oh my God, it's on a cardboard, cardboard telescope that he built on his balcony. That's um, amazing. These kids are really amazing. I know. And I keep saying the word kids and I apologize because they're not kids. They're, they're, they're young men and women and they're amazing. This is, um, this is Emmeline. Uh, this is a really um, special picture to me because Emmeline um, played hockey, ice hockey with my daughter. And we had many, many, many hour long drives up to the rink in Rockville, Maryland um, with our Emmeline in the back seat. And after I would drop Alexandra off, and then I would go to drop Emma off at her house, which is a little further away. Um, I would try and tell Emma about my favorite guitar solos and Mark Knopfler and Gillian Welch and Amy Mann. And when I went back to shoot this picture of Emmeline, um, she said, Matt, you know, you, you taught me about Amy Mann and now I really like Amy Mann. And I thought, oh, my work here on earth is done. So anyway, it's a special picture. But again, it was cool. I was able to incorporate the backdrop into this tree 
again, the unnatural backdrop floating through and isolating Emma, and you still see that she's in a garden. Um, this is Peter. Peter wants to be the first um, uh, member of Congress with uh, cerebral palsy. And he is, as I said earlier, he is revered among his classmates. He is, he is all about politics. He is so smart. And I, I said, Peter, um, I put a call out on Facebook. I said, does anybody have that oldie timey Abraham Lincoln bunting, you know, like Ford's theater? <laughs> Um, that's a terrible image. Um, Ford's Theater. And of course, the next morning I opened the door and there was a, a, a bag on my porch with some oldie timey bunting, stapled it to, as you can see, a, a paint. Uh, it's either a broomstick or a paint stick. Um, I just used a staple gun and that's his mom with uh, holding it uh, behind him. And uh, we had this and uh, he said he wants to be the first president. Uh, with cerebral palsy but at first he said but first congress first and i love this picture it's homemade it's silly and this is a, a student from ethiopia named yoni um this was when the uh, today show was following us it's just a, just a beautiful portrait you know nothing nothing um katie n katie tells one of the great stories what i'm doing is i'm having each student I ask them three questions. They're like uh, Monty Python at the bridge questions. You know, I said, the, the price of admission for this is that you send me an email with the following questions. What did you do? Where are you going? What do you love? And from those three questions answered, I'm able to post to my Instagram a story about each one. This uh, senior, Katie, told the most remarkable story of going to see Shrek on Broadway when she was a very, very little girl. And it was dark and it was raining. And as they left the theater on rowing back to their hotel, she could hear harp music. And she was a little girl and they rounded the corner and there in the darkness and the rain was a woman playing the harp. And she said, it changed my life that moment. And I knew that someday I would be a harpist. And now here she is and she's an accomplished harpist. Wow. All on the porch. So here's one of the pictures where you see the backdrop falling away. Um, there's mom proudly holding it with gloves on and um, Alicia holding her art. I love everything about this picture. If she's proud, she's um, strong, she's a great artist and there's mom beaming. And um, it's just, do I care that the backdrop is flopping? No, who cares? It's just, it makes it more real. It makes it more homegrown. This is uh, LED not L-E-D, but L-E-D period. Um, and she's a lacrosse player and I just had her sort of bounce that ball into the net a little bit. And, you know, you're trying, you're limited by one lens. I can't go with a wide angle lens. I can't do anything. Um, I'm just limited within a 70 to 200. Um, and so, you know, you're trying to make interesting pictures. It's nice though when you get that eye lock on that eye though, and it just holds the focus there despite what's. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. This is an. So here's picture. Tariqua. Um, it, it 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 is because again points on the graph. Sorry to keep repeating that, but it's been a, a sort of a mantra through my life when I do these stories. Is do you have enough points on the graph? And so, Tariqua is deaf and has special needs. Um, she was adopted uh, when she was a little girl from Ethiopia. Um, I had been telling Ella, who was on our broadcast earlier, um, Ella, I need to make sure these pictures are diverse um, in terms of, you know, pursuits as well. And um, I want uh, I want everybody to be included in this project. And um, she said, well, here you, you know, through my best buddies program, here is Tariqua and Tariqua is a senior. Um, she's in a, what's called a, I believe it's called the life skills, um, um, class, but she's a senior at Yorktown and I couldn't, um, communicate with her via lip reading because obviously I'm wearing a mask and I'm 20 feet away. And so I was yelling through my mask, um, to her mom. And I just said, I just want her to show me joy. And she, boy, did she show me joy. Um, it's one of like my favorite pictures in 35 years, I think it's, it's just, well, this is the picture when I, when I saw, I, when I saw you post this picture 
I knew this project was legit, that, that there was a legit message there. <laughs> Thank and you. A, and a great story, and that you were definitely on the right track here. Well, thanks for the Greg Gibson seal of approval. Okay. Um, Rubber stamp. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, um, uh, Andy is on the, the rifle team. You know, you just want the, the, the trappings. I love her, her ripped jeans. I love the backdrop being uneven. I love the front porch. I love that she's got the shooting glasses on. And, you know, you get, you get, you get to the, the heart of what Andy loves to do. I mean, that's definitely different. I mean, you don't, <laughs> a girl on the rifle, sh on the rifle team, that's not a, not an everyday after school activity. I have no idea, but I, you know, and here we got Bijan and again, Bijan. now I'm using the backdrop as kind of the tooth the 2001 monolith backdrop. And it's just, you know, I like it when they come towards me and the backdrop is just this kind of monolithic thing. And it's, it's in every single picture, obviously. Um, and it's just in different ways. Same thing. So this is a, a yeah, this is a, a, a kid named Teo. I said, Hey, Theo. And he said, Teo. And I said, Oh, you're not a Greek Theo. You're a French Teo. Um, and I like that there was an old red wagon at the fence and I, his hand is somewhat amusingly Napoleon-esque. And I just thought he looked very French and, you know, I just liked the portrait. Simple. <laughs> did you, did you have him pose with the, in the, with the hand in the Napoleon? Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm always just, yeah. You know, when you're a portrait photographer, you have to be in control of the portrait. It's not ac accidental photography, you know, there's a, you have to sort of tell your sitter, as Avedon used to call sitter, you know, this is, you have to sort of pose them. Here's a good point. For the, if, you would ask, if you would look at the Instagram accounts of any of these seniors, this is not the kind of picture you would find. You would see them all being silly and, you know, lots of group pictures where everybody's, you know, silly and sticking their tongues out. For the first time, perhaps, these seniors are having a professional photographer tell them not to smile, tell them what to do. And I just, I think they enjoy it in the end. And I, you have to, you have to sort of take control of the picture. Um, you know, basketball again, what is lost, what is lost, what is lost. And so um, these were, this was uh, um, an early on picture. I, you know, I like the Americana esque, the, the Americana ness of this picture. Um, sometimes I like to show the greater surround again. The artificial backdrop links them all. It isolates the students so that it's not just a senior picture, it's part of a, a greater puzzle. There's Ali, um, you know, and again, this really, some of the pictures are whimsical you'll see coming up and some of them are just portraits of loss. And I think if this is a portrait of loss, this team won the state championship twice and this would have been the third time they could have defended last year's state title and the season just evaporated. I mean, it literally was, the rug was pulled out. And so I think this picture is, is gets to that. Just, you know, kind of John Mayer-esque kind of <laughs> um, portrait. These, I mean, there's a beautiful um, picture of a, of a senior named Pius and I just, his eyes are so beautiful and it's just simple. Now I'm on the backdrop, you know, again, you have to mix it up. Sometimes you're on the backdrop, sometimes you're showing the backdrop, but it's just sort of down and dirty quick. You know, it's, I think we took this, I think this portrait shoot in the parks apartment building may took seven minutes. Wow. Okay. So this is one of my favorite pictures of the whole darn thing. This is Tara. Tara is wearing the dress she would have worn to prom. Tara is a theater. Um, she's going to school to be a, a physics major, but Tara loves theater and she likes her expertise is in making big theater props, like Game of Thrones 
type swords and and this was the first time I think that I just I said Tara just walk walk across the backdrop and you know she's not looking at me and suddenly it now again points on a graph now I felt like okay now we're starting to get into pictures that are really less obvious and I love this. I love that she's wearing a prom dress carrying a battle axe. I just, I love that she's not on the backdrop and completely. I love that she's walking. I love the dress. I love that she's barefoot. It's, you know, you, you do a project like this and you get points on a graph and you start saying, now I'm going to try this. And this emboldened me to try something with a swimmer, you know, in a hot tub and stuff like that. So you learn as you're going and you start, um, you know, you start upping the game a little bit and challenging challenging yourself to to make cool pictures. And I love the fact that Tara said, I don't have to be looking at the camera. It's way more effective to have this beautiful senior um, walking across this backdrop with a battle axe. And the last <laughs> thing I'll say about Tara is that is that my wife uh, and our friend Miriam walk our dogs together every morning after we've dropped our daughter off at the high school. And we park our car right by the high school and we walk, walk our dogs past the, the arriving students. And every single day uh, for a year, Tara has walked by us at a certain point, like you could set your watch to it. And it's 817, Tara walks by us. And I would always say there's best dressed and because she's always dressed very, and then I, I pulled up to her house and she, she walked and I was like, oh my God, it's you, it's best dressed. Um, I've seen you, you've walked by us every day. So this has been fun meeting all these very talented kids. I, I kind of get what you say about like points on the graph and on the graph and kind of finding your way as you go, because I, I do think like the longer you work on a project, the more you get involved in it, you sort of find your groove, you get in the zone and you, you figure out what works and what doesn't. Right. Right. No, no question. There's no question. Um, you know, I said, I don't want trophy case pictures, but in this case, this is not trophy. I mean, this, uh, she is so fiercely proud of, of rowing at Yorktown um, all these years. And um, this is Allison and Allison, a funny story about Allison that really kind of like changed me a little bit was that I was posting on Instagram. And uh, like I said, I would just say Allison L period, um, no last names. And I wasn't sure if Allison had two L's or one L in her name. So I quickly Googled her just to see if there's like some rowing um, uh, entry. And I came up with her rowing profile for college recruiters. You know, this is sort of a declaration that students make for coaches so that they get noticed. And she wrote this essay that talked about looking at the clock at school so that until she could go to the boathouse and feeling the sting of the frigid water in March hit her face and her breath stinking. Oh my God, it was like poetry. It was, and I thought these kids are so amazing. They're so passionate and sort of together in a way that I don't remember myself being that together in 1979 um, when I was beginning my senior year. I mean, I thought I was okay, but I was never as passionate about things the way these students are passionate. So in that sense, I love that she's wearing all her medals. Now this is, this, one is that I, this, this is one that I really liked because I just love her dad back there. Her dad, he looks like he is so proud. Exactly. I love it when the parents are in the picture because they're, they've become, it's gone meta. It's kind of like, you know, yeah, the pride. She has the perfect look for this project of lost season. You know, it's, I mean, if you were, if you were to call the book suspended animation, you know, or suspended season or whatever, this would be the picture you would use. And yet you have this extra element of a beaming dad um, looking down, holding the backdrop. This is actually a different backdrop. It's my small backdrop. <laughs> um, but um, uh, I love it. I love, I love her look and I love that ball just <laughs> suspended in, in midair, just like their senior year became suspended in midair. Here's the swimmer. So, he, yeah, so here's the final product from the swimming. Um, 
So it and was again, with the elbow prop. I, you the know, it was with of, the elbow propped on the uh, on the edge. <laughs> yeah, you have to sort of pose people, and there's an action picture probably coming up next. But I like this one, you know, because I don't think you get a sense of the as much as I like this picture. It's pretty cool. I think you need to see the the whimsy of the fact that she's in a hot tub rather than the Yorktown High School pool, and she has no pool right now, and so. I do like this picture. It, again, it it sort of has cover image written all over it. I just the goggles, the her hair. It's it's. Well, it does. I mean, just the, I like the expression on her face is is uh, right on the money for the theme of the project because you do sort of see this sort of distant stare and the in the loss in her eyes. And again, I like this picture, but I don't think you get the hot tubness of it yet. Uh, it's too tight. So this picture, is there a next picture to this one, Greg? Let me just see. Nope, nope, so go back. So this, um, go back. So this senior, Taylor, uh, the reason I ask is I shot her twice. I shot her in the identical spot, wearing her cheerleader jacket and, and looking, you know, just like somebody who was a cheerleader. And then she's wearing the lab coat. Um, she did an internship at Stanford. Um, she wants to go to Grambling State to be um, an anesthesiologist and follow in her father's footsteps. Her father passed away uh, unexpectedly, and she wants to go to his alma mater and become a, a, a doctor, specifically an anesthesiologist. So I like this was sort of a double picture because she's she's high school cheerleader and future doctor in 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 a in a duo. This was, uh, you know, this was Marion. I said, Marion, would you mind? Do you have a tutu? And she's like, I don't know if I have a tutu at home. Um, she has tights. And I don't know if she wanted to do it. And I said, please, trust me, you know, put your ballet slippers on. She's wearing her college sweatshirt, but she's got her ballet tights on. And I said, you know, we, we just had her dance. And again, you can see I'm still at the same distance you know, you can't really change that um, because of the constraints of, of safety. And I'm, I just had her dance and I said, here's your point and here's where you're going to jump and here's your mark and go. She nailed it. She did nail it. This is as simple as it gets, but here's a four sport athlete who, you know, it all just disappeared. So there's nothing, there's nothing um, fancy about this, but it's just sort of, it has the Ken Burns Civil War feel to it, um, you know, in terms of the stare that you see in, in those pictures. And that's what I like about that. I want some I want 75 percent of this to feel longing and 25 percent to feel joyous, I guess, if I had to nail it down. There's Natalie. And there's Natalie. And yes, again, I had her with the, the water polo headgear on. And but I just sort of like the joy of this this picture i don't know it just feels simple and joyous nothing fancy so <laughs> this is how crazy now so this picture i i live near a country club um of which i am not a member um and i i called the country club which is obviously closed but the general manager happened to pick up the phone and i said my name is Matt. I'm a photographer. I live next to Junius. Junius is a member. He goes, oh, Junius, of course. And I said, listen, I'm about to shoot a golfer. And can I borrow a flag stick? And he's like, what? I said, I just need a flag stick. <laughs> and um, he said, sure. And so he, I drove by and he left it for me. And I shot a picture. And again, the backdrop is there, unnatural, isolated, isolating, and our little flag stick there that that's mom nice is little, holding in the that's foreground. That's a nice little detail because I don't think a lot of people would have even thought to do something like that. They would have just shown up and, and made do with what was there. But I think that's a really interesting yeah, point that you, I, I that like, you pre-planned this and in better arrangements to find a flag. I, I, I don't know if I pre-planned it. I was on my way to it and I happened to think of the country club and I, I said, ooh, we could get a flag stick in there. Even, even in a little sense, it'll just give you that little point on a graph, you know, a little detail. 
I, I like this picture. Why? Because you could, I don't know if it comes across on screen here on my, my crappy laptop, but it's raining out and the rain is falling and the dogwoods are in bloom and, you know, the season is gone and the, the senior year is gone. And I like the little droplets of rain and just simple. I like the juxtaposition or the backdrop against the, the blooms of the dogwoods. It almost has sort of yeah. an indoor outdoor kind of feel to it, you know? Like almost like there's a big yeah, picture. Yeah, I want to show her. the greater. Right. I want it to have the theme, but I also want it to show a little bit outside. So now we're getting, <laughs> we're getting tricksterish. Um, but I mean, here's a swimmer, and I thought, well, why not? Let's get your sister, your little sister, into the picture. I love that she's laughing hysterically. I love that he's not. I love, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this was something, um, you know, it's just, it's whimsical and fun, sort of like um, uh, Charlotte. Okay, so now the backdrop is now a back cloth, a drop cloth. And uh, Miles here says he wants to go to uh, auto body school and learn how to be a mechanic. And I thought, how am I going to get this backdrop into this picture? And then I thought, you know what, it'll be a drop cloth. And I, I just said, here, sit on the sit on the backdrop. And again, it was just another silly idea, but to, <laughs> to maintain the theme and to just be silly. Sort of like the red couch. Um, Camille, um, I, you know, what, what can you do when you have a, a, a girl with hair as beautiful as that? I mean, it just and I didn't even plan. I said, like, I want you to just keep heading the ball and as I looked in the viewfinder to check to see if I was in focus, I saw her hair just doing this, you know, like you're in a, a free fall and I, I, the ball was there and it, she's looking right at the camera and um, it, was, it was good. Um, I, you know, it's again, simplicity is always best. I don't know what to say about this picture other than it's just beautiful to me. I don't know. It's just simple and it's just this kind of no frills, beautiful portrait. I don't know. I love this picture. This is Fifi. And if I were to ever have another daughter, I would name her Fifi because I think it's the greatest nickname ever. Her, her real name is Elizabeth. And I mean, this was one of those pictures early on where, again, they're wearing street clothes and they're missing what they're missing in this case for Fifi swimming and you know another picture that I think oh if we do some cover image someday this would be it um it's and it was. just we use that as our placeholder and you know, uh and yeah right right get, right get the word out for our social media as a social media right. picture for this episode right right you know again you can see dad holding there's a runner um, you know, and dad's holding all his numbers from all his events and stuff and five minutes, 10 minutes tops. Um, Sam Kittner like the backdrop as a constant with the messy off center. Yep. I, I agree. It's just, they're unnatural portraits. The backdrop makes it unnatural. You know, I could shoot the same runner with those trees, those birch trees right there. And it would be a nice picture, but the backdrop sort of has to now, it's sort of the supporting cast. And yeah, I agree. So a windy day, you can see, um, I think mom is behind the backdrop, probably holding it from blowing off to New Jersey. Um, but, you know, um, Haley is a, a high jumper on the track team, but, you know, there is no track team. And so she's in her street clothes, but she's jumping. And so, and she has sort of like um, Camille, she has great hair to jump. And I love the little string of her hoodie flying in the air. So when you, when you have a jumper, make them jump, you know, <laughs> remember Philippe Paulsman used to do that. So this is a great kid. Um, I mean, just a great kid. He's taking a gap year. He wants to he wants to work at Starbucks. He loves his job at Starbucks so much. And there's the backdrop in the distance where the drive through is is uh, right behind us. There were about 70 cars waiting in the drive through for this one Starbucks. 
It's the only Starbucks with a drive through right around here. And um, I just, he was great. And I said, you know, yeah, do that. And it's, you know, fun. <laughs> I love that one. Some personality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, I love the backdrop. And now we're back to simplicity. And again, you talk about pictures that are just, I mean, that say the lost season. I mean, you know, does this guy look like a pitcher? He's tall and lanky and, um, you know, I, it's, it's just it's a real, it's a real, simple. yeah, it's real, very different from like this kind of feel back. Yeah. This kind of feel where you right. really do sort of feel right. the longing, see the longing in their eyes. Right. So like I said, 75% longing and 25% whimsical is my ratio. I don't want too many silly pictures. Um, so I love this picture. I haven't even posted this picture and I love this picture not because she looks like mean like i don't want to i don't want to give the impression of like mean girl with this but i just like the like it's just a season of cheering that isn't happening so i just it's just kind of and you can see the afternoon this was the last shot of the day as the sun was setting behind her you can see my weight my my weight on the backdrop holding it down from the wind and again i'm not trying to say pissy. I'm just trying to sort of, you know, elicit just a season of cheering that did not happen. And so um, just to kind of show you guys, this is actually, I think, the last picture Matt shot today, in fact. So he shot this picture right before he came home to to be on to do this show. So this is again, right I out shot of the this camera. picture about three hours ago. Yeah. Yep. Three hours ago, I shot this. And this is, you know, these are the kids that I love because I, I said to, to Bennett, Bennett had put on his sheet, um, what do you love? And he said, I love a lot of things. <laughs> I said to, in my car, I said to myself, all right, Bennett, that doesn't really help me um, with anything. And then so I called Bennett. And I said, what does I like a lot of things mean? And he said, well, Mr. Mendelssohn, you know, I, I was wondering if you might mind if I did a a fly fishing because I'm going to Elon University down towards, you know, High Point, North, Car North Carolina. And uh, I love to go fly fishing. And I said, Bennett, let me ask you something. Do you have a pair of hip waders? And he said, Mr. Mendelssohn, I do. And I said, Bennett, we're going to make a good picture together. And oops, I'm losing my earpiece here. Um, and I just had him put on his hip waders. He's in the yard. I'm still the same 20, 30 feet away. And um, and I just had him cast his fly rod towards me a few times. Total time in this picture, six minutes. Um, not trying to reinvent the wheel here. Get in, get out, nobody gets hurt. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to spend an hour um, trying to make this any better than it is. I mean, to me, I want to do a, a safety first distance second you know simplicity third um and just i you know i love the fact that some of these seniors are get it and they're willing to you know do something cool like this like put on your hip waders or go into a hot tub um, um michael o'brien just said the stories are great i bet the students are learning things they never knew about their classmates it's so true so there was one post that said from a student saying, I, I knew Cameron rode crew, but I never knew Cameron was uh, an Eagle Scout. And, you know, yeah, we're learning. And I had one student, a football player, and he's posing with his football uniform holding a bulldog, and it's a really fun picture. But then he asked me to take a picture of him with a watch on, and he told me a story that it's the watch his stepfather gave to him before he passed away and it's very meaningful to him and I'm learning things about these students and I'm guaranteeing half the students at, at Yorktown High School didn't know about Sterling the football player and his his uh, his watch so yes I'm gonna grab my earpiece <laughs> well these are awesome Matt thanks so much for coming and spending the time and going through all of them and talking about them in detail and sharing some of the stories because it's really a compelling group of kids and, and they're very fortunate to have you uh, to be there for them to, uh, 
to really uh, memorialize this kind of year and and make it into a, I mean, it could have been a lot more, but I mean, at least as um, Natalie, I think it was said, I mean, you've given them something, or I know maybe it was Bijan, I think said, you've given them something that nobody else is going to have, um, you know. Well, I'll tell you one fun thing, something that I did not think about when I started the project is that now, because of all this media attention, you know, that they're seeing me on Greg Gibson live, um, um, no, that all the media attention has done one thing that is strange. Suddenly I put the backdrop up on a street and people are driving by and they're honking now. And they're saying, we saw you in the Washington Post, good luck senior. And it's really thrilling for me because I think we've, as I, I've been saying, we've kind of in a really little way restored the rightful order to what should have been a season of congratulations and well wishes for a class that came to a crashing halt. Um, Christina is saying low hanging fruit is true, but it was meant to be that someone who I said, I don't uh, thank you. I just, yeah, you just have to, you just have to, um, you know, like I said, <laughs> be like my mother. And, you know, when it's, when there's a blizzard, you bring hot chocolate to the garbage men and the mailman. Um, that's what my mother used to do. And I think this is just an extension of, of that, um, which is, you know, when things, when, you know, if a barn burns down in Amish country, the next weekend, all the Amish show up and they build the barn. And that's what it is. So um, I'm just trying to do what I know for the last 35 years to my neighborhood. These are all my neighbors. I don't know them. I don't know these students, but they're my neighbors and they've been you know, going through a tough time. So I figure I can do something. Well, let's, um, if anybody out there has any questions, uh, now's the time to get your questions in. So we'll try to, um, spend the last little bit of time here, um, answering any of your questions. So go ahead. And if, you, if, if there's any questions out there, go ahead and get those posted in the live chat. Uh, here's one, uh, about shooting film. Okay. Do you ever shoot on film? I shot more film than I mean, I would assume you know, lots of photographers combined early in my career. So when I left USA Today, well, I mean, shooting at USA Today and UPI was all film, of course. And then when I left USA Today in 2001 to do a Holocaust project with my brother, we spent several years, several trips over several years shooting Holocaust survivors from the same town in Poland that my grandparents were from. Um, that was all done on black and white film on a Hasselblad. You can see those on my website at mattmendelson.com. I miss film tremendously. I miss the analogness of it all. I miss the squareness of the Hasselblad frame. I miss looking down at a canvas, so to speak, this way. So I don't shoot a lot of film now because it's just, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just a pain in the neck, I guess, from a commercial aspect. Um, but I miss film tremendously. I have shot so much film in my life that um, I probably was going to turn into a film canister. Um, so yes, I miss film. I miss the square format of a Hasselblad. Um, that's what I really miss. And if you go to the website and look under the Holocaust Project, you'll see those squares and how that forces you to think. In a way, it's the same thing as the backdrop. It's a blank canvas. And it forces you to say, I have this blank canvas. How am I going to fill it? In the, uh, the Hasselblad, it's a square. And you say, I have this square finder. How am I going to fill it? And I was really good at that. And I miss it terribly. But then you get into the whole issue of who's going to scan it and all of that stuff. So if somebody wants to help me figure that part out, I'd love to go back to shooting film. I can't do it on this project. I can't get to my lab, my, my, my lab. My studio is 30 minutes from here. I used to go to my studio every day, three times a day with the, you know, I, I can't do that anymore. So this requires a camera that I can Wi-Fi pictures to my iPhone. So I'm grateful for that. But in a different lifetime, in a different world, I would love to be shooting film again. Oh, my God, I miss the I miss the the graininess and the, you know, when I look at pictures of photographers who shoot like models, they're also perfect. And I hate that perfect. They're also retouched. I don't like that. I like it messy. 
So I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of questions. So I think just maybe a couple more things here and we're going to close this out. So I know um, we mentioned that you're not charging any money for this project. I mean, have people been offering you money or, or any, any other kind of like um, gifts or anything? And, um, and then yeah, go ahead and answer that one. People, that with the yeah. last one. So there's, there's no, there's no money taken. Um, people have been giving me, um, um, I've gotten a lot of wine. I've got a lot of chocolate chip <laughs> cookies, which I don't, I don't need right now. And the Kentucky best bourbon. one was the shirt from the Kentucky bourbon, uh, family said I it was, I, it was a great line. She said, she handed me a wine bag and she said, we're from Kentucky. We don't do wine. Um, and it was a beautiful bottle of bourbon. Um, no, there's no, there's no money right now. Again, I feel uncomfortable mixing for profit and not for profit right now. Um, at a later date, I'm sure we will sell prints um, because we have no business. Uh, my business, Good Morning America producer said, are you available next Wednesday to speak to me? And I said, next Wednesday, I'm available for the next three years right now. Um, so um, I'm looking, I'm, Michael says, I think Matt loves so many of the images. It's a real, uh, thank you. Yeah, I love being a photographer. I've done this 35 years and just like the Lincoln Memorial, when I feel out of it and I feel like I'm not part of it, I wanna jump off the couch. And I guess I, like you were saying, Greg, I was feeling, okay, puzzles are fine. Watching The Office reruns with Alexander is fine, but how many reruns of The Office can you watch? So now I feel happy. I am having more fun in the last two and a half weeks than I have had in the last 15 years of doing weddings. That's no offense to my brides and grooms, but it's just it's just exciting to do these pictures. It's fun. Everybody is happy. Everybody comes out of their door. Everyone, 150 kids, they all come out of their door with their parents when I honk the horn and I drive up with their hand over their heart and they mouth the words, thank you so much. It's like, it's, I'm having a ball. There's no thank you so much. I, I'm just, it's fun. I beats doing puzzles. Well, that's great. And actually, I think that is a great place to end this program on. I think it's a great, positive, inspiring point to end this program with. And so, yeah, thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks for sharing all this stuff uh, and talking to everybody in so much detail about these pictures. I think it's a, I think it's an important piece of work. And one of the things we talked about back um, when we talked to Paul Giroux about his uh, portraits in the time of Corona project is that who is going to be the visual historian of record of this, uh, of this time in our lives of this particular crisis? Uh, it's really going to be uh, interesting sort of when we're past this to kind of look back on it and see what the iconic imagery is uh, from this crisis. And I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that it's not going to be some kind of a Zoom grid view of a bunch of people wearing masks. I hope it's going to be pictures like this that are personal uh, and beautiful and storytelling and kind of convey that sense of longing and that sense of loss of the things that people are missing out on. You know, these high school seniors are missing out on some important uh, rites of passage in school. And a lot of us, uh, like myself, uh, are unemployed right now. And so uh, a lot of us are seeing our savings dwindle. Uh, businesses that we've invested a lot of time building uh, uh, are suffering. And so uh, I do hope that, you know, the, the lasting iconic imagery uh, that comes out of this situation is going to be something that's very personal. And um, I do want to just touch on the mental health thing just one more time. You know, anybody that's out there that's struggling, you know, find somebody to reach out to, find some photographers or friends to talk to, get on Zoom and, and teleconference. I know my kids are doing it all the time. My wife is doing it and, um, and I'm doing it with all of you. And so reach out, don't be isolated. Um, if you can find some kind of a project to work on, it doesn't necessarily be, have to be something where you're out, um, you know, leave, leave projects like this to people like Matt and experienced journalists who have uh, a track record of doing things like this, but find something that you can sink your teeth into. Educate yourself about something. Uh, I, I've been trying to learn how to live stream. And so I've really invested a lot of time in that. And that's really made the time pass for me. And, and I enjoy doing these programs and, and hopefully we're going to be doing some more. But um, I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks again, Matt. I will holla at you later. And uh, 
So long, okay. guys. Uh, this is the real picture, and we'll see you next time.